Hello, everybody. We are here. Uh, sorry about the delay. We're here now. Jason had some urgent business. Um, but we're here now with episode 40. Mood is another. Uh, it's another one of those 11 out of 10 episodes right now. Good. Um, yeah, dude, I'm I'm feeling it. May I ask why? Multiple reasons. So, I don't know. I kind of switched up my diet. Um, I got a really good workout in and I also discovered a new type of salsa. <laughs> oh no, dude. I literally get this. I found salsa with electric guitar in it. I'm sure. I mean, I would guess there'd be some with a lot of electric guitar just based on how versatile the instrument is. I guess I had never found it, but <clears throat> oh dude, it was so good. Like it, it, it plays in like, like cause a lot of salsa has a lot of those it has potential for all those cool Phrygian kind of solos, and that's what they did. Oh, oh dude, hell it, yeah. it was so good. I, I'm thinking about literally just doing another salsa playlist for the recommendation after this one. <laughs> like, just to include that and then other stuff that I missed. I'm ready it, for it. It's so good. Or I could do that, or like the psychedelic cumbia, or um, I don't know, because like I, I wanted to show you bachata which was like the Spanish guitar ballad music mixed with like Afro-Cuban drum beats. Hmm. It's a yeah, real fucking vibe. Yes. Um, Bring it on mate. But how are you do? How are you doing tonight? I'm fucking swell. <laughs> I <don't know>. might, <laughs> might I ask why? <laughs> no, <clears throat> it's about the same. I'm just coasting. Uh, nothing bad's happened. So that's good. I yeah, just well, kind of, <laughs> yeah it's a good way to look at it um you want to just go right into it fuck it bro slam it on all right so i recommended to jason the film prince of egypt which um let me see let me so it was made by dreamworks and it's one of their um it's it's part of their line of hand drawn animated movies, which I think most of them are are really good. Um, so it came out in nineteen ninety eight. Uh, Jason, you said you hadn't seen this since you were like a little kid, right? Yeah, I don't even know if I've seen it all the way through. Oh man. <laughs> well, um, before <coughs> I just go off, you know, saying things I want to say, what did you think of the Prince of Egypt? It was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I remember it being a good movie back then, at least captivating just on the visuals. I, I knew that the scenery was going to be beautiful right. and whatnot. Yeah. <clears throat> the yeah. only thing that I do... I need some water. <clears throat> the only thing that I don't like is the fucking musical shit. I can't take it. It's just so cringy to me, and it's just so forced, and it's just it's not needed. Like I feel like it would be a ten times better movie if it didn't have the fucking dumb little songs in it honestly the songs are like good though <clears throat> i mean they're fine they're like what you'd expect in a disney movie they're all the fucking same at least they all sound the same but they're not though they're not but they sound the same and that's what matters but they don't <laughs> they do like no because you got like the opening song with like those cute like those like big string instruments and it's really it's very inspired by like Les Mis and like that it really just sounds like slaves like marching and everything which I really liked uh, and that that opening scene is just so striking and kind of like it, it's intense let me reiterate I guess not the <clears throat> the scenes with everybody all working and all that shit like the group songs i'm talking about like when there is a serious scene and then some dumb bitch just starts singing that like... just ha that happened like once <laughs> no it didn't it happened a couple times through the movie when there's literally one what do there's... you mean when there was that one song at the end where moses's <clears throat> sister just like breaks out in song and like i remember you literally just like started belting out laughing because the fucking they just killed a kid and then they just start singing like this really like <laughs> this is forced yeah, fucking but it's, melodramatic yeah, song. It was just but hilarious. It's epic. It's epic because then you, it leads into like you see the huge shots of all the Hebrew people being freed and they're going to the promised land, baby. 
That's all well and good. I'm just saying the forced musical in a movie is cringy to me. It That's wasn't. It was. Saying. It was forced, like maybe in that one instance. But other than that, like the songs blend really well. Like the song about when he's singing about how, you know, like when he's kind of in denial about who he is, right? And he has, <laughs> and he sings about how he's like, no, I'm the proud prince of Egypt, right? Um, mm-hmm. and he has that whole existential crisis. I, th- I thought that was really well done. I love how they blended like the transition of him meeting his um siblings for the first time right and then <laughs> she's like i knew you cared about our freedom and he's like why would i care about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah there were there are some good one-liners in the movie that's what right. i do like about it <laughs> oh i i must actually so i I must reiterate sorry sorry not read it backtrack so for those who don't know the prince of egypt like i said is, is an animated film from 1998 produced by dreamworks animation right and it is um a retelling of the story of moses and if you don't know the story of moses like what are you doing bro (laughs) like i don't really know what to tell you and like spoilers guys like the story has been out for four thousand years i think so like just i don't even okay yeah You, you 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 get the deal right so i don't really know how much i need to explain the plot other than that, like, there's certain things I understand from the scripture that they kind of tweaked and edited for, um, like, storytelling purposes, which I actually liked. I really liked the relationship between Moses and his brother Ramses. I thought that was really well written. Yeah, the dyna- <clears throat> my God, the dynamic was nice. <laughs> Sound like yeah. a smoker over here. I know, dude. <clears throat> this movie made God. you go smoke some DMT, dude. <laughs> You know, if I smoke some DMT, I probably could write a movie like this. I'm not going to lie. No, honestly, there were some DMT <laughs> moments, but yeah. stay with, like, what, what were you saying? What were you saying? <laughs> uh, fuck, I don't even remember. God damn it. I just, I'm so taken aback. Um, oh, yeah, the dynamic between him and his brother, I thought that was well written. Um, the accent thing was strange. I guess they're just showing how the... It's like they have to do the British villain, so like all the all the evil characters or the bad characters have a British accent. <laughs> it just it just like works out like that, you know. I I, I yeah. didn't even really notice it because I'm just so used to that. <laughs> um. Also, it's fitting because he's voiced by Ray Fiennes, who plays Voldemort. <laughs> uh Yeah. I no. Did, like the, this cast is just like it's insane. <clears throat> Val Kilmer's Moses. Ray Fiennes is Ramsey's right. You got Patrick Stewart is the is their dad, like the Pharaoh. Jeff Goldblum is Aaron. Um, who else is in here? Yeah, Danny Glover is Jeff is Jeffro. Steve um, Martin, that one threw me off. Yeah, Steve Martin and Martin Short are like the um the magicians, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So this cast is oh yeah, and Michelle Pfeiffer is Sephora interesting right so great cast it's like almost like too many people right um like too many people that it's like oh yeah that's just a big guy you know i'm just surprised that they got this oh and sandra bullock is miriam i recognize her voice yeah right yeah so fuck what were we even talking about (laughs) there's so much to talk about i i it's hard to like think about this in like a concise way um so okay you said you liked it (laughs) and we got that much (laughs) we got there i think it's one of those ones where it's like a because they used to do more like bible stories back in the day they did joseph Uh, king of dreams which is not is not as good but i still like that one yeah i think this one is it's probably the more not palatable but it's probably the best written story that people that you know of any religion or no religion will enjoy because it's definitely not like a preachy kind of story oh yeah i i I think this is the greatest religious movie ever made like what even comes close i haven't seen too many of them but a lot of them have that forced kind of narrative but this one i guess the the only thing I guess you probably could say is just like the 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 atmosphere of the Hebrews being slaves. It's like that kind of dynamic, I guess you could question, but 
you know, it was thousands of years ago. So, well, yeah, I mean that, yeah. Cause things like that, it's just like, that, um, yeah, I'm just like, who, like, who are we supposed to blame? Like the people who wrote the Bible? <laughs> well, actually I think we do that for a lot of things. But, <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. But like, I guess for like the, how good this, the quality of the writing, it's like, well, that's just the story in the Bible. <laughs> Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think this is the definitive version of the story of Moses. Um. Yeah, like I just think they did such a good job with like, you know, because when you read the Bible and you like you watch other iterations of the story of Moses, like there's really no relationship between, um, between Moses and and Pharaoh, right? Ramses, right? Because I remember watching other cartoons when I was a little kid. Because I, I we would always watch this kind of stuff in Catholic school, right? So we would just watch like a bunch of them, right? Um, it would just be like stuff they like throw on, and some of the stuff like I just remember like there was no. I noticed because I I I remember seeing this movie since I was a little kid. Like I noticed like there was no relationship ever in any other iteration between Ramses and Moses. So it would always just be come back, and it's just like let my people go. It's like nah, bro. And like that that was <laughs> it. There's him. there's none of this like well we were brothers, dude. Like what happened? And I, I love that dynamic. Um, and I love how it shows how. It hurts both of them, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I, man, like I, you really get Ramses, especially with how his dad treated him, right? Because he's like, you have to, like, he has that, like, that, um, that monarch, like, mentality, like, no, you must continue the bloodline, like, you can't, like, be weak at all, you know, you just, um, you know, like, you have to live up to this, like, great pharaoh tradition and everything, and you can see how, how it, it just, it's killing Ramses, right, and how um when you could debate about whether or not the the dad was in the right or wrong um but you can just see how what his dad told him about being the weak link i love that line you know like the one weak link can can break the um i don't know like what it was like can break the chains of the of the strongest dynasty right and ramsey's like no i I can't be the weak link right like no matter what and that's and i love how it it it, it makes this whole story just kind of make more sense i guess because um it really makes you understand, I don't know, like, like why God did all these plagues and everything. Like, it was because of Pharaoh's arrogance, right? And how he just refused to let his people go. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm going to let my own people suffer because I am the king, right? And no one can stop me, right? Um, Because so, a lot of... <clears throat> sorry. Go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah, because I've heard a lot of, it, um like, reviews and opinions about this movie. And a lot of them say that it depicts God as evil and like i would actually like argue quite against that like it it, it very much shows how like it's it's really ramses who's the bad guy well i mean you can think of a lot of stories like i guess i mean if you're looking at it under the context of moralism so it's like how are you going to judge the person that created you he's or if we're made in you know in his own image so it's like i guess the part that people get hung over is like all loving and all knowing i think that's those two lines are what people kind of hold to that standard, you know, because how could someone all loving be, you know, (laughs) make Abraham sacrifice his son. But then the whole point of it was he wasn't actually going to do it just to show his devotion. Right. So I don't know. Yeah, It's, it's a, I mean, it's a very, um, it's a very big (coughs) theological question, like in philosophical question. Right. Um, but I just, I, I really think it just did a, they did a wonderful job with the characters especially god himself i love i loved how they they did him in the burning bush i thought that was just excellent that was some dmt shit dude yeah that was some dmt oh and did you know that the um the voice for god is the same voice as as moses i didn't notice that it's I'm an interesting back on i didn't recognize it it's an interesting little detail and like you can kind of interpret that however you want so like what is the context of the burning bush like is, is there any sort of like like imagery that that's supposed to represent or is that literally just what is in the story and there's no other importance to it other than the fact that that's just god speaking through whatever vessel i mean yeah he was just speaking through a vessel but i know a lot of christians um they say that that's a foreshadowing of of jesus and because jesus is god as a man right so he like the man was a vessel right so it was it was showing like it was it was foreshadowing that god could use vessels to like you know embody and things like that no i get that premise but just why a burning bush like that specifically that imagery 
I think that's just what the story is. Like, I don't know why it was that. Um, the other one that was confusing in this, not just from this movie, well, not not really in the movie, but I, I guess I must have missed the, because I remember confused when I was learning about it back then, but the, where they have to sacrifice a lamb and, for like, you know, spread the blood on the door to save you from God killing your firstborn son, right? Um, I, so the Hebrews would sacrifice lambs anyway, right? That was just part of their culture. Um, so that an offering, right? Right. As an offering, like you would take a perfectly healthy lamb and just, you know, just give it up to God. Right. So, and, but obviously like, I, I, I'm sure that the reason for that was because like the Egyptians would not do that. So that was a way of God knowing that like you were, um, Hebrew. So I guess that when I learned it, I just was imagining that like, did he kill like Hebrew children too? Or was that only for Moses' family to do that? That's why I was confused. No, he's, he saved everyone who was Hebrew. Unless you forgot to put the, the lamb's blood. <laughs> well, that's why I was confused why he was putting the lamb's blood on the door. Like, what was the point of that? If they're, That's what I didn't get. Like, the importance was on the, um, on the Pharaoh and, and the Egyptian children and all that shit. Like, they killed those those kids but why did you have to, if you're hebrew why did you have to put the lamb on the or the lamb's blood on the door well it's like so the angel of death would passed over every single house and if you had the marking of the blood then that's like the angel of death knew that you were hebrew and they wouldn't kill you right so the, i guess that was all i was saying so like all the hebrew people did it not just moses's family yes all the hebrew people did okay what i don't know why like if for some reason like it like why why would you need to do that? Like if it was the angel of death and just was it just blindly going around we're fucking killing everything and just had to see the blood? Like that's the part. It's stuff like that in the Bible that always just makes me question like why? What is the purpose? I mean it's it's <laughs> weird, but um I mean it's kind of just some DMT shit, dude. <laughs> I just like to roll with it. Like those weird stories like that. Um I mean the whole story is really not that weird, but that like little detail, right? Um, you know what's weird is I think like all the ritualistic shit like that from the Bible is where all these like demonic and cult stuff take all their inspiration from. It's like Leviticus and Revelations and all that, like all the specific shit that was ritualistic in nature. <laughs> all the weird stuff that like, like, you know, spreading blood on a door is pretty metal, you know, to save yourself. Well, I guess that was just for that one time. Mm. I'm not as biblically li- literate as I wish I was. But there's I've, been a couple of stories I've been like that where I remember learning about it. I can't remember off the top of my fucking head now, of course, but I remember learning it and just be like, I, I always remember being confused about the purpose of it. Like I get the point of like just doing what God tells you to do and it'll work out. But I've always was very interested in the specific methods that you had to follow. Like why that specifically, you know what I mean? It could have been anything. It could have been put, you know, your favorite possession outside your door and the angel of death takes that and you won't get killed. Like it, could, it literally could be anything. I was just, I've always been interested as to why it specifically was that way. If that makes sense. My explanation would be that's because that I guess like the lambs, like I said, that's just what the culture did anyways. So that was like a clear mark that you were different than the than the host Egyptian population. Why would you have to make that mark? Is what I'm saying. Like, why why does it need to like? <laughs> so you had to you had to like stay in your house. Because remember, like, you notice, like, in the, the way, like, the movie depicts it, like, the whole, like, the, the winds and, the, and like, the, the angel and, like, all, you know, all the, like, the white, like, winds and everything, like, they, it just kind of fills up, like, the entire streets. So, I guess, like, if you walked into that, then you would have died. So, you had to stay inside. So, that was the only way to, like, mark from being inside your, like, you see what I'm saying? No, I get why. I'm just saying, like, just if you, if you think about it logically, it's like, it's a, if it's a benevolent wind of death. And its only distinction is lamb's blood on the door. Like, that. just, it's oddly specific. You know what I mean? Well, I guess, I mean. Like, very I, oddly specific. Well, yeah, I guess so that he really knows who is who. That's what, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's those weirdly specific criteria in the Bible have always been, like, fascinating and also just, like, why to me. Yeah, it's, it's really fascinating, you know? Um, but, um,. Yeah, this movie, I just the, especially this time that we watched it, it really cemented itself for me as 10 out of 10. And it's one of my favorite movies of all time, like no question. 
Um, it's just, it's epic. It's, it's just, it's, it's artistic. It's brutal too. And it's just kind of, especially like for a kid's movie, this is really good stuff. Um, yeah, I think it's the right, <coughs> excuse me, amount of tragedy for kids to watch. Cause you obviously don't see like there's fighting, but there's not like it's shown or like, there's not too much. I can't even remember. Anyway, um, just, yeah, the, the amount of stuff, it's, a lot of it's implied. So I think like the, the most brutal parts kids wouldn't understand. Um, except maybe the, the scene of the angel of death taking uh Pharaoh's kid, like that's obviously blatant, but just the concept of it, they wouldn't really get it, I guess. Right. Um, well, actually the, the plagues themselves, that whole montage is pretty brutal. And I, think I love the, how besides the the frogs and the locusts, it's like the raining fire. I think is probably the most like visually brutal aspect. That of it. was badass. Like the way they yeah, show it, and you cool. just see like the the sphinx and the pyramids, and you just see like the meteors come down. That was so epic. Yeah, they like My... <laughs> I, that's why I love animation because in a live action that would just look so stupid. Yeah, it looked like Transformers or something. Uh, Michael exa- Bay explosions. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and I love shaking. And I love how the the plague scene is edited right with that that song where it's it's speaking the the words from the Bible like I send the what what is it you know it's like the um um I send the sword I send the horde thus set, thus saith the Lord and all this oh it's so good like let my them, let my people yeah. go and all that stuff it's just a bunch of great lines bunch of great like <laughs> quotable frameable lines in this movie my favorite subtle um details and i don't know if this was in the bible but every time moses did like miracles or something supernatural ask the fucking <laughs> the the clergyman of the pharaoh had to like figure out what he did and recreate it <laughs> yeah that was funny and then like because it, it, it it's like it kind of it wins points for me right because it's showing that like the 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 judeo christian god is real and all these other gods are just fake because like oh how how do we like and they have to like make up something to make it look like they like when he turns the river into blood they just kind of just take sneak in some blood and just put it in the the thing next to pharaoh and they're oh look we can do the same thing (laughs) that was was... that in the bible like did they try to actually explain and um mimic what moses was doing to the pharaoh Hmm, i don't i don't know it's making me want to actually go back and read the story it's it's a really good story you know and i the um thus saith the lord dude <laughs> <laughs> well the one um, thing that i was really interested in was i think the the most important part of the story is obviously when he parts the sea and they can walk across and that's why i asked you like where does he actually lead them because if you look at the map that part of egypt like cairo is like really north of the um of the Red Sea, and, like, if they had to, like, they definitely could have walked across, like, on the top part to get to wherever in the Middle East they needed to go. That's why I was saying, wait, was it technically Israel, or not Israel back then, whatever they called it back then, Jerusalem. Um, Um, I'm looking at the map. Where is it? Because if you look at it, because the Red Sea is, like, southwest of Egypt, so it's, like, there's hundreds of miles of land above it, like, so that's why, like, why do they have to go all the way down to the Red Sea to cross it? They could have just walked across probably parallel to where Egypt was, if you look at it on a map. Wait, it's north. Yeah. It's northwest of Egypt. No, it's the the it's southwest. Southwest of Cairo. Yeah, if you look at it on a map. I've always liked looking, like trying to like picture out like when like where people say they go in stories. So like if you look at Egypt, right, Cairo is northwest, but I guess the closest thing would be the maybe the Suez Canal or there's like a thin part of it where the Nile is. Um, or is it the, that has to be the Nile, right? Dude, dude, like all of these names, they're all in like Arabic. I can't read this. I'm looking on the map for some reason it's in Arabic. <laughs> so I can't, it, I don't even know if it is a Red Sea because it just says like, Wadi al I don't know. No, it <laughs> is. So like the, the Red Sea, it, it's a massive, looks like a massive skinny lake. And then it kind of divulges into two little fingers at the top, but all of them are south of Cairo, but. I guess there's a river, but it's it's a very skinny river. I don't know if that's the is that the Nile? No, the Nile is the Nile is west. That's like directly south of Cairo. So there's like a little like it the the sea pinches off into obviously the the Suez Canal is there now, but I don't know if it was like that back then. I wonder if the whole entire thing 
was the Red Sea, but it's like the skinniest part of the Red Sea. It's literally... So that's supposedly where they went? What do you mean? Like, that's where they crossed? The Red Sea, right? Moses part of the Red Sea. That's the famous passage. Right, so, but what you're saying, you're seeing, is like, that's where they actually ended up? I know they, no, wait, I, they... No, what I'm saying is, like, I'm curious where he led them, because, like, if it was oh, Jerusalem yeah, yeah. or modern-day Israel, like, that's north east so it's like they wouldn't have had to cross the river or the 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 the, yeah, the fucking sea to get to there but what i'm saying is like two thousand years ago or however long the story took place i don't know what the water looked like it could have been not as dry as it is now and it could have been wider at that point i don't know i'm seeing on a modern day map you look at it and it's like it looks like they could have just walked around <laughs> oh yeah i'm looking at it you see so, what i'm saying they ended up in mount sinai which is on the gaza strip Um. Right. So there's so that's actually like, yeah. So like they could have just followed the coastline to the Gaza Strip. They wouldn't have to cross. Well, like I said, it's like a it's like a super tiny river that goes all the way to the Mediterranean. So oh yeah, I I I think they actually they f I, yeah. I'm looking at the maps of these. They know that like the route is totally inefficient, but it was like that's just what God told them to do, so that's what they did. <laughs> Because they didn't oh, know. Oh, even back then. <laughs> let's see, like, let's. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, well, because they didn't know what the most efficient route was. Because there was no, like, maps. There's no cartography. So they just followed this jank route. <laughs> Interesting. They They'd have to go really for... fucking far. Yeah, they were wandering for 40 years. Or actually, no, that was after Sinai, I think. God, I'm not as biblically literate as I wish I am. Damn it. Um, uh, but anyways, you just follow the politics, <laughs> right? But anyways, <laughs> uh, that scene where he parts the Red Sea, the way it looks visually is so cool. It does look pretty fucking cool. And it's like Moses, like finally believes and it's so epic and, but it's not cheesy. Like it's, you know how like those things can, especially in religious movies, which it pains me to, it, it kills me to say, like, I don't, I don't want to say that like all these like Christian like religious movies are are bad because like they have really good messages, right? They're just terribly made, and it's annoying because like that's why like, I I don't want to say that they're bad, but I know they are. But in this situation, I think it's all of the the stuff is just so well done. It's so tasteful. Like I said it's very artistic. Well, I don't think it was a religious movie. I think it just was telling a biblical story. It wasn't like so like you know there's a different like I feel like a lot of the reasons why a lot of contemporary Christian music and movies are bad. It's because they force that narrative onto an already existing thing. You know what I mean? As opposed oh. to like, I feel like you can tell biblical stories in a neutral context and because like the stories themselves are interesting. You yeah, know what I mean? This, like this isn't really a neutral context. I would say it's still, I, I, I really do think it's a religious movie. I mean, like it just by telling a biblical story in the way, like you're not, they're not altering any of the things to like, it's not, um, it's going to be told from, a, I guess, my, I, let me rephrase yeah, it's, it. It's, it's going told to be told from, from a Christian. Of, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. told from Moses's perspective. Right. And then it's like, yeah, yeah. it's not like the passion of the Christ where like they change a big part of it. And it's not, and it, and it doesn't claim to be biblical. Right. Like that. They, they, yeah. They, they yeah. put a, they put a disclaimer in the, in the passion of the Christ, which I actually appreciate where it says like, this is not a retelling of the gospels. This is just like, you know, somebody came up with an idea. Like a what if Jesus did this, right? And I and I appreciate that because they're not passing it off as as scripture. Whereas this is actually, um, like it says that it, it's 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 a retelling of the story of Exodus, and um, and I appreciate that too. And they also do a good job of it. So, <laughs> uh, points yeah, for, points for me. <laughs> yeah, let me re, let me restate it. So like, obviously, so I, it is told from a Christian perspective, but it doesn't do it in a very um, one sided way. I or no, that's. I don't know how to describe it, but like, you, you know, you can just tell, like, like when you watch, like, uh, Veggie Tales is, is different because, like, that one is directly made for people that are religious, but, like, yeah, they that, do it. Yeah, that is definitely, um, well, I, I like Veggie Tales, actually, but that is much more, like, the message is, like, it's very overt, right? Yeah, like, they're telling exactly. you, like, like, you know, here's the lesson for today, kids, and everything, like, you know, take that how you will. I, I like I said, I like Veggie Tales, but that is more explicitly, can, like, being made to convey the message yeah and which is fine but what i'm saying uh, i was using veggie tales as an example because i like veggie tales too 
I think they, they comically tell the stories well. And obviously, like, if you aren't religious, I mean, you probably could still you're... enjoy I... it if you like. I'm, I'm sure you yeah, can enjoy wonder. it. <laughs> because, like, I mean, it does have good morals and, you know, fables and actual and they're, good they're storytelling. Funny. Yeah, yeah, no, they, they got good characters. I like Bob and Larry. They got good chemistry. <laughs> um, They really do. I, I think they're good, like, they're a good pair, you know, like, with Larry as a sidekick. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I think like yeah, I think there's a difference between like just blatantly retelling a message and just telling a good story. You know, I th I think that that's what separates good religious well, art from bad. Right, because like if you tell the story of just like we're just telling a good story, like the good religious elements just come out naturally, which I think really it, it ha is is in this movie. Like I think you would agree with me. Yeah. Like yeah, just no, all I, the I agree. yeah, all the, all the religious stuff and like God and everything. It's just it just it just clicks. It makes sense. Like especially even if you aren't um, Judeo Christian. Like I know tons of atheists that even like this movie. Um, because yeah, that's just, my point. You don't have to like. It's just a good movie, and, and that's why it's kind of unfortunate because now it's so political. Like they're never gonna make a movie like that again because everyone's gonna be like, oh, it's you know indoctrination. When like it doesn't have to. You know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> I know it doesn't but, like, have to be. I would love to see the whole Bible just like told in this in this format. It would be so cool. I wanted the like the people like, to do it. How awesome kind of... would that be if they <laughs> that made would be like cool, yeah. dude? Like if they made Jesus, like that would be so sick. I think um, the... like oh, it, it's the Prince of Egypt, and then you get the Prince of Peace, which is one of Jesus's titles. That would be epic. Like the sequel, the long-awaited sequel, and it's and it's like old testament to new testament oh that'd be so epic i would totally watch that i'll be like even if i'm in the theater by myself i would not care <laughs> yeah noah's ark would be a good story too to do there's tons of good stories there's that there's like the babylonian try the one sucked i think the one they did was sucked they did joseph with the technicolor dream coat uh yeah jo joseph king of dreams sorry that's what it was so that he's like he was the last patriarch from the the Pentateuch. Yeah. Or the Torah, sorry. Um I'm I'm just I'm used to calling it the Pentateuch because I'm a Christian. <laughs> I've never even heard that to describe the Torah. The Pentateuch well, so the Torah is just the first five books of the Bible. The Pentateuch is the Greek translation of it. I and see. it's what and it's what Christians commonly refer to the first five books of the Bible as. Hmm. Um like penta in Greek obviously means five, like pentagon and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, then this, yeah. and then the Septuagint is a Greek translation, I think, of the Old Testament or the Bible as no, no. So I'm I'm pretty sure it's it's a transla a Greek translation of the Old Testament. Um, that was a bit like revolutionary. It's like this the software update. Oh, we we got the <laughs> Old Testament in Greek, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be fun to do a bunch of shorts of all like the old Abrahamic laws that people had to follow. <laughs> I would love to see, oh, dude, some, some shit about a no shellfish. <laughs> some shit about Abraham. That would be like on some DMT level, like when he just gets like, like you know when when God tells him to just go go west. Yeah. Like when I, I think I might have mentioned this on the podcast. Like when I read the this book about the history of the Jews. It just asked the question in the epilogue, like, imagine how different the world would be if Abraham never left Ur and he just stayed there. Like, wow, like, just because he moved west, like, the whole, like, world, you know? It's like, it's wow. It's amazing to think about how different everything would be if people just changed one thing in their life. Like, every historical figure just did one thing different, you know? I know, but but it's such a testament to me that, like, your decisions matter, you know? Oh yeah, whether you're yeah. fated to or not, you definitely have butterflies. Butterfly yeah, it's such effect. a. Isn't like butterfly effect? Five. I can't. Butterfly <laughs> effect is like the f flap of a butterfly's wings can like change the weather or something like that. It's meant to illustrate that the even the smallest of things that you do have a cause and effect, and they change anything. You know. Okay. It's it's mainly used in like time travel movies, like you know everything dominoes. So like you change one little thing, then it just spirals out of control into all these massive historical events being changed. So I guess oh, this is yeah, exaggerated yeah, the... being like the flap of a butterfly wing is all it takes to change history. I is see. The, is the metaphor? 
Yeah, because like when they go back in time in movies, it's like, don't even crush a bug or something like <laughs> that. Yeah, stuff like that. I see. Um, yeah, but the the actual art and like the design of this movie, it's so like it, it's it's the perfect balance of like style and like cartooniness with like a lot of it just feels real. Like the sand just feels like sand, right? And, like the water just feels like water, and the fire is so like just fiery. It 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 almost feels like it just it's so real at times and like the, right. the way the the lighting looks it's so just mm, it's so good and I'm just, I'm just looking at some of these pictures right now like all the symmetry and like just the images of like just the the wide landscape shots of egypt right with like all of the pharaoh statues it's so so good yeah no it's definitely a very beautifully done movie and i hate the fact that i mean obviously we we talk we fucking beat animation talk to death but yeah i i enjoy <laughs> all the visual aspects of this movie especially when you're waiting for the fire tornado to separate them from going into the ocean that was badass yeah um but oh i i love when like the the the, the sequence where moses is is going back to Egypt. That was so epic. I was getting goosebumps. And you just see his, and it just closes up on his eyes. And he's just like, oh yeah, I'm coming to free my people. And it was just so cool. It wasn't cheesy. It was just epic. Like I, and I, especially Moses as a character, I thought he was excellent. You really yeah, got no, his him. His character was good. Yeah. Cause like you see him, he's, he's kind of cocky, right? He's just like a, he's just like a, you know, a Royal, like, you know, he's just an asshole prince. Right. But then he gets humbled. Right. And he realizes his, his origins as a, as a slave. Right. And he's like, Oh no, what have I done? Right. And you just see like the change from like, you know, when he realizes what his, his father did to the, to his own people. Right. And like, Oh, and, and, and that, that whole dream sequence with the hieroglyphics, it's so creative. Like I, they, they really didn't, lack in in the create in the in, in the creativity aspect like they they really did they went all out and they just they did so many new things that like i'm sure all of the there's a bunch of meetings like would that really work you know and they were just like no nope, we're just gonna go for it like i'm sure there was a a meeting for the hieroglyphic dream sequence where it was like are, are you sure that's gonna work and these people were just like yep we, we just gotta do it man yeah that and part it, was cool i did like that where you transformed into a hieroglyph and had to run away from the soldiers. That was nice. Yeah, and I liked how they ran and how like they moved in the hieroglyphics. It looked really uh, the abstractness. Like it really did feel like some sort of dream. Um, and just yeah, the, the one, yeah. Oh, sorry. Were you gonna say something? Well, I was gonna say that the one thing that I also really liked was their. <sighs> how do I put it? I mean, I guess when you're talking about or when you're trying to depict any sort of Bible story, you have to have that trippy, you know, mystifying element to it where the, the things that just happen for whatever reason, you just have to be, um, you have to be a slave to it and just kind of move on. Well, not move on, like just go with the flow. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's all I, I think the whole sequence where you actually do see God is really well handled. How it's like fire. And I love how the fire just turns purple, you know? Mm-hmm right um and oh and you just like when moses is just like all the fire like just lifts him up in the air and he finally like sees everything you know and you just see like the the reflection of like the purple flame in his eyes and it's like yeah this is totally a dmt trip <laughs> yeah and he just got freaked out when god like raised his voice a little bit because <laughs> yeah, he's like because i mean i mean i probably would react the same way like if you're in the presence of god and like he's telling you to like go to egypt and free his people he's like but but what if the but what if any god just goes like ape shit like who made the the heavens and the earth who did this who did that and remember, it's like if you say go go oh it was so good it was so good it was so good and i and um like i said um it wins points for me because you know i'm a religious person i think god is like our creator right he's the ultimate good right so just to feel like the the might and the power of god was really awesome and even for atheists you know like just in the context of the story it just makes sense and they can roll with it um just man they they just really did a bang up job with this movie i, I freaking love this movie man can i just can i keep saying that 
how good this movie is it, it's your a, show <laughs> it, right it's a masterpiece man when i was watching that scene i thought it'd be really funny <laughs> like if i was god and i was talking like telling like moses to do something he was just like I would, I would always, I feel like I would be like, a, like a god, like Loki. I would just like fuck with my beings and all that shit. Like I would just like, <laughs> every time you question, you're like, shut the fuck up, and you'd be like, what? And I'm like, just kidding. Go do this, and then you do it like, don't leave with your left foot. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, um, you will get AIDS. Yes, exactly. But <laughs> I also like the song. Because is what it feels like. I feel like God sometimes like. To me, he just has like a bored sense of humor. He just likes to fuck with us and so making us do all this oddly specific shit, or you'll I mean, die. He, he is God, so I don't know. Well, I've talked to a couple people like that, and they were basically like, "If it's true that we are made in His image, this is that type of humor that's in a lot of people." So it's like, are we made? <laughs> are we made for the image of just our natural ability and desire to fuck with other things and just create like temporary chaos? For amusement, I mean, I guess. Well, despite Jesus, like there really, there really is no way to like know. I mean, I'm not saying you're claiming to know, but I guess like the way I'd say, like, there's really no way to know what God's personality would be, just because like he's like outside of space and time, right? And like we can't even like fathom that. But we do have Jesus, who is God made man, right? And we know what he was like, so. Well, I'm just saying, like, if you think about, like, being created in his image, right? Right, yeah. Just solely off of that, not, like, judging the personality, but, like, you look at all of our personality traits, like, all the good and bad, it's like, are we all derived from, like, every single emotion and feeling from him? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, dude, this is some DMT shit. Like, this whole <laughs> movie. It's it's literally... <clears throat> it's an anytime, any mood movie, right? Um. It just feels like some crazy, like, I don't even know how else to describe it. Like, there's all this stuff in the desert. It's just so mystical. <laughs> like, it literally feels, I mean, a lot of the stuff in the Bible is like this. It just feels, and a lot of Jesus, you know, people say religious stuff in general, just feels like someone smoked some DMT. And they just wrote shit down. I mean, I don't believe that that's what happened with the Bible, but it has that vibe, right? I mean, if you look at every early civilization or early writings, like most of the time, I think I I don't think it'd be out of the realm realm of possibility to say that most of them are probably off of some sort of psychedelic, right? Like, whether it's that... a natural plant or herb or whatever. Like, I feel like that's not super far out of the question. Yeah, that's what people say. Like, I know there was... They talked about this on Joe Rogan. Um, he was saying how, like, there's this Tel Aviv study saying that, like, they think that the burning bush was like a... It was like a... um. It was a bush with, like, these leaves that are really rich in DMT. And that, like, Moses went yeah. on a went on a DMT trip. Even of course, if that Rogan is... was talking about that shit. <laughs> Oh, right, right. No, he talks about that all the time. And he was talking <laughs> yeah. about how, like, the stuff he's seen on DMT and how he sees these shapes in, like, in, like, across, like, different cultures, right? And he thinks it's, like, not coincidental, right? Like, you, he, like, every culture has this kind of idea of, like, the civilization, like, the bearer of civilization, or, like, the giver of civilization. And he says, like, the way that, like, the shapes he sees in DMT... And the way he sees it in, like, the Egyptian, like, eyes, you know, like, on hieroglyph, like, it's, like, the same shape. And he's, like, bro, I believe in aliens. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, the aliens put it there. Like, whoa, bro, what's up with that? Right. Makes you but, think. Makes but, you think. No, but, like, do you know what I'm talking about? Like, the stuff? <laughs> yeah, that, I do. I've, I've actually, it's, I don't want to talk really about it because cool. I feel like it's, I feel like it's been talked to death. Everyone's saying the same no, shit. No, so, like, but... I don't want to go into, like, a DMT monologue, but. I listen to a lot of ancient archaeology and Graham Hancock is the guy that a lot of people follow and a lot of people give him shit as being an insanely active pseudo archaeologist. But he always talks about DMT as being a collective consciousness. So like, is it something and this I think people are starting to research that now. So 
because everyone's experiences are so similar, so they're trying to see if it has any sort of objective consciousness outside of just being chemical hallucinations in our body. And obviously, like, if the Egyptians were taking that shit back then and seeing similar stuff, and that's what they refer to as their gods, and that was their portal to experience it, or that's what the holy shamans were doing to pass along the message, and that recreates into everything, is the I mean, it's starting to theorize that the Egyptians had a really good understanding of vibration, especially like with the onks or the the onk, what the fuck it's called, the little the medical symbol. Um, yeah, yeah. Using like they're they're starting to theorize that they use it as some sort of instrument for something. The I was I don't know if it's has any sort of validity or not, but the one that I was saying was that they it's like some sort of healing thing for your nasal passageway like you put it like near your nose cavity and you just fucking hit it and it vibrates mm. or the way that i mean i think it's i think it should be general knowledge like not claiming to say what the pyramids were or who actually built them but they definitely weren't tombs like a hundred percent if you look at the way that they're built like they definitely had some sort of function the fact that there's water underneath of it so like they definitely were used for something um, i thought i thought like some of them were and some of them weren't well like the main one like the the Khufu or Kaf I can't fucking remember their names, but the big the three big three that are in Cairo. What um what do you think they did? Like what were they doing in there? I don't know. If you I mean if you look at them, so the whole and what what people don't realize, like the outside is obviously sandstone, right? The inside is pure granite. What the hell? And it is laser it it almost looks like it's laser cut. It's really tight. You can't even stick a flat razor through them. It's watertight. And granite is super hard to fucking cut. So that's why all the shit about aliens and, you know, higher beings making the pyramids kind of comes from because, like, it's very, like, people are calling bullshit that they could cut granite so precise with copper tools. Like, the, I mean, people have, like, proved that time and time again. Like, there's just no fucking way that they could do that. Even, like, getting the blocks there is a different story, but the in, the internal side is granite or rose quartz or some super hard-ass rock. Yeah, but, and it's like, how the fuck do you even do that on the inside? And it's like, there's but no... the thing is, like, <laughs> there's there's no rooms or like, there's no like function, like, there's no flat surfaces to get to any of the rooms. Like, they added wooden panels and stairs to get to like they call it the cha- the king's chamber, the queen's chamber. But yeah, I know, I it's know that, literally yeah. just a room with a fucking box in the middle, and that's it. And like, there's a couple shafts. Like, the pyramids were not like a. People didn't go there to conjugate. Everything is on an incline or a decline. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not made to be a tomb. It's it's like it'd be the most inefficient thing in in the world. You know what I mean? Like if you just actually look at a diagram, or like if you like YouTube people exploring through the t- or uh, through the pyramid, like there's no way that's what it was used for. It's just impossible. I'm sure. No. Um, like efficiency. Like if it was a tomb, let's say. I'm sure, like, efficiency wasn't really what they cared about. I'm sure, like, what they cared about was honoring, like, the, the former pharaohs. So it but makes there's sense no hieroglyphs, would... there's no anything. And, I mean, um, no, no, artifacts I, I, is I'm, different because like, it could have been raided, but... I'm not making the case that it was a tomb. I was just saying, like, from the efficiency standpoint, why that wouldn't be the case. Well, you look at their other burial sites, like at the Valley of Kings, it's a totally different layout, and they have multiple people that are buried there. Like, almost oh, all of oh, the pharaohs okay. are buried. So... Yeah, that's I don't the know. part that is kind really, of bullshit. I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's yeah, it is bullshit, but also like it's just fascinating. Um yeah, I hope they actually figure it out what it is, but anyway, talking about DMT, that I mean, people are starting to do research and see if there's any validity towards that, but that's why like all those ancient stories about gods and how they're kind of similar to each other from shared experiences, it would make sense if it was some sort of psychedelic like DMT. It would, or yeah, even, psilocybin or whatever. Even, yeah, exactly. But even so, like, even if it is a hallucination, like, how does that mean it isn't real? You well, know? that's what they're trying to. That's what they're trying to figure out. Yeah, it was. Um, I was actually watching Harry Potter, like the last one, right? You know, when when Harry, sorry, spoilers for Harry Potter. Gosh, <laughs> man. Yeah, spoilers for Harry Potter. He was a fuck. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, so when Harry dies and he goes to heaven. Right, and Dumbledore's is Dumbledore's there. When Harry asks him before he goes back, he's like, Is this all real? Or is it just happening inside my head? And Dumbledore geniusly says, Of course it's all happening inside your head. But how does that mean it's not real? <laughs> so I was like, Huh, good way to put it, you know? Yeah. 
I think when you have this many similar experiences, there has to be something there. Because how, pro I mean, I guess it is also plausible that one specific chemical just makes most human experiences have similar visions. Um, well, right, because we're all humans, you know. It just kind of yeah. further proves to me that we're all, you know, united in everything. Um, yeah, so who knows? Very interesting shit. But yeah, I mean, Egypt has always been the the birthplace of conspiracy theories and all that shit. But one thing for sure, the pyramids are not fucking tombs. And they had to have something other than bronze tools and copper tools to carve that shit. Good granite on the inside. They had some lasers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's why people always say aliens built it because the actual construction of the inside part of the pyramids is insane. Like it's 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 not like to say it's impossible with the technology they had is kind of an understatement. It's an understatement to say it's yeah. impossible. Uh, yeah, it really is. Yeah, because I really like want to know. There's that's one thing like like, like like last technology. There's a bunch of different theorized ways that they could have done it, but until we find that out, like bronze tools is not a good explanation there's no fucking way and they're like oh use water and sand and then you grind it down like no there's it's just it would take way too fucking long for yeah. even for like thousands of people to do that every day for a couple hundred years like it's just not possible so they gotta oh, man. They're, 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 my point is like they don't actually know and they're trying to give us an explanation it's like oh this is the most plausible thing it's like no it's not you just don't know so until you find a more plausible explanation your answer is bullshit so that's kind of the point. <laughs> At least with the Bible, you can just say it was it was God. So like that's a much better explanation. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, it's kind of hard to tentatively prove. Dude, well, I mean, it's a you can metaphysically prove it, whereas like you can't I, I metaphysically prove all this bullshit with the pyramids. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm looking at yeah. I'm just looking at shots of the cinematography, like all lined up together of the Prince of Egypt. It's so beautiful. It's so yeah. beautiful. Like all the, you see all the different colors used. Oh man. It's just, it also really made it. It really just kind of jerks off to Egypt. Kind of like how in Babel, when, when Alejandro Gonzalez and Yartu was just like, yep, Mexico is pretty cool. <laughs> you know? um, he's like, Hey dude, Mexico. Did you know that that was a place? Like this movie is totally like, Hey Egypt, you know, that was a place, right? <laughs> um, it just they really immerse you in that Egyptian aesthetic, you know. Yeah, no, I I severely enjoy Egypt and all the depictions of it. I love going to the um, the the I can't remember. There's a specific museum in Richmond that has some Egyptian artifacts, and then there's a lot in the Naturalist Museum in D.C. Um, they have a couple actual mummies. They have some sarcophagi, some little artifacts, some little statues. Some um, I don't know if they have any um whatever the fuck the the hieroglyphs written on the the palm leaves or papyrus or whatever the fuck it's called um <clears throat> but no i've always found egypt fascinating and i hope i i honestly think egypt is like one of our one of the greatest mysteries that we have on this planet and i think once we figure out exactly what the egyptians were like because I, like i think what was it i think they said that cleopatra in the amount of years is closer to the development of the iPhone than the construction of the pyramids. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's so cool. That is yeah. so cool, man. So Egypt has been fucking around forever. Like so many different dynasties and so many different cultures and all that shit. So I want to know like the, the origin, like the original, like Egyptian kingdoms, the old kingdoms, all that stuff. And like I said, if it's they're rumored to be a ton older and that has to be proved and that's what people are in the process of trying to prove and mainstream science has really got their dick so far up the textbook version of Egypt that they don't want to let go of anything. But again, there's not really too much hard evidence to prove otherwise, so that's why they kind of have their foothold on it for now. Um, but I think, honestly, Egypt is probably the greatest mysterious civilization on this planet. Either that or, like, dude, have you seen, like, the shit in ancient India? Yeah, shit's insane. Or Indonesia, um, also Turkey. Gobekli Tepe is is probably the most Tibet that famous example. Or um, yeah, let me say ancient India. Ooh, yeah, that's badass. <laughs> it's so. Yeah, what like, is, is, just, is it? Is it Sanskrit just, or Hindi? Like one of the one of the Indian languages is like the oldest I think on it's, Earth it, that's still spoken. Sans. Oh well, no, Sanskrit is not spoken anymore. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's like a, it's a religious language, like Latin. 
where like people don't speak it, but it's used in like religious contexts. Interesting. Dude, I'm just looking at all this Indian shit. It's so cool. <laughs> like I just I love looking at pictures of just like civilizations and everything. Like it doesn't like I'm not like any civilization, but like just a lot of civilization. Like like ever I'm a big believer that like every culture has something to show off. Right? Yeah. Um like even if you look at like ancient Rome, that just looks so badass and like mighty and it's like and you know, you know, it's 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 just like the the origins of like government and democracy and everything like you can tell how like the european stuff looks i mean it's cool and mysterious but in like a different way you know than like all of this like eastern stuff yeah rome was really cool when i went there to because i mean you, you can assume that these places are big but you don't really have an idea of the scale until you go there it's yeah, i'm insane. going i'm going back dude yeah, rome was uh rome was cool um <laughs> they have guys that dress up like fucking like old roman soldiers and they just go around and harass tourists for money yeah fuck those guys they're they really have... aggressive <laughs> too <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like they take a picture that's that's five euros please well not even that they'll like grow <laughs> women like they're just like really like oh really fucking fi- yeah like, I, I don't know maybe it's calmed down I've, it's been like eight years or ten fuck like yeah i think like eight years since i've been there um so it's just fucking insane but yeah. um i i'm looking up it says is it tamil or tamil apparently that's the oldest living language it's tamil yes yes tamil. People, people do speak that yes so apparently the first attested between 5320 bc and 8th century ce which does that mean that it's been attested to be using that's a, that's a lot of time to fucking I mean, I'm sure the way it was spoken then is quite different than it is now. It's like Greek. Like, Greek is also on that list of, like, m- like oldest living languages. Yeah. Whereas, like, Greek then is not the same as Greek now. Like, you could make the case that it's, like, a different language. I guess Which, it's true, because every, every language has some sort of origin from the one previous. So I don't know. It's that and, like, a separation and, like, deviation from other, like like deviation from like a linguistic norm comes from like environmental factors like mountains i know is a big thing separates cultures right yeah um yeah and it's just really contact with other people influences language as well yeah and egyptian is one of those older languages too i believe so i mean like why wouldn't it be you know yeah. i mean th- that that's just my educated guess you know same thing with hebrew hebrew's 3000 greek is 2900 Basque is 2200 Lithuanian. Yeah, yeah, Basque. That's a really interesting. It's spoken in the northwest region of Spain. And it's connected to like all the languages, like the the languages of like, like those weird isolate languages in Eastern Europe, like Hungarian and Estonian. Like it's just this group of people like past these mountains in the far northwest of spain that they just got that far out and isolated (laughs) yeah chinese is around six thousand. Ah, yes wow yeah but dude just like look up the pictures from the prince of egypt like like, it's so cool (laughs) it's just like i am mesmerized you should get a poster for your room (laughs) i don't i don't do that anymore but if I were to do it, this would definitely be what it is. Oh, what? Because um, you can't legally drink yet, but you're about to get married. You can't have posters in your fucking room. No, I just I don't want posters in my room. <laughs> you're maturing as an adult now. It's too childish. I guess so. You could say. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, oh, dude, just look at like the the pictures of like, like the shots from like when the meteors are coming down, and you see the Sphinx. Like it's the Sphinx's eyes are like. Or not, not the Sphinx, like the Pharaohs, like the Pharaohs, the Pharaohs' eyes in the statue are glowing. It looks so cool. You know what's really interesting to me is, as how people decide to do like what are they going to depict this? Because like obviously, like Egypt is a pretty ancient culture, and we have some depictions of the clothes that they would wear, right? But most of the time, it's just creative liberty that you just kind of make a guess or you just kind of make up your own shit to what you think they would wear back in the day, like the colors and the specific patterns. Do you, like, do you ever think about that? 
Yeah, I know. So this is actually one of the movies. I, this is actually, I'll, I'll make this the next movie. Because if we're going to go on this uh, civilization route, I'm going to show you Apocalypto. I've which seen is, it. That's a great movie. Right. I, but I, we're, I, I, I do we're watching watch it. That, yeah, that shit is badass. Even though it gets, I mean, because it's a Mel Gibson movie, obviously it's going to, it gets a bunch of criticism for like historical accuracy. But yeah, like, especially the end scene. The end scene is like way off. The right. ship's coming. Well, I, I understand like the message that it was showing, but it still makes like no sense. Um, yeah. but I know like there, there's certain things that like, I'm pretty sure like we, they didn't know like what a, like a certain like occupation in the Mayan culture like would wear. So they kind of had to guess or something like, you yeah. know, like, like just like you were saying, they have to, unless you have like, obviously if you find artifacts of clothing, but you don't know what the person was that wore that, like how do you, like if it's not orally passed down as the specific traditions and patterns and colors or actual you know things that they wear like i think shirts obviously like people like oh that's a traditional headdress or that's a traditional bracelet or necklace like there's actual specific things they have concrete evidence of but just like the everyday wear that somebody would wear like how the fuck would they know unless they found evidence of it i guess like with egypt you have the hieroglyphics so that that's some indication yeah but all the ones that i've seen are like people like in some cloth kind of like covering but they're shirtless they have sandals like i don't think i've seen any depictions or let me look because obviously like yeah let me look at this shit too because i'm actually really curious now because apparently white blue and gold were the main like colors like you could totally tell is the theme right right so i guess it was a lot of white robes blue headdresses they mainly wore knee Wealthy men wore knee-length skirts, loincloths, or kilts. I guess if you look at purely... Yes, yeah, so it is, I guess, a lot of white robes and gold patterns on the midriff. Dude, this Egyptian drip. <laughs> Dude, it's nice. <laughs> Okay, so I guess it's not. I I could I could see how you can take inspiration because you can kind of make whatever pattern on a white robe, you know. Right. Um. But yeah, going back to this movie, I love how they they contrast like the Egyptian culture, and then he you know he escapes, and then he finds Sephora, and then he he just gets it kind of reintegrated into the Jewish culture out there in the middle of the desert right mm -hmm. and you just see their way of life how it got how it should be right because these people are free right um and he has that whole just rediscovery of who he is that was really well done um it has a yeah it has a, it, i really like the the way the movie depicts tradition right like when it's taken to the right way and how it's taken to the wrong way right you know because um like fair like ramses took tradition the wrong way where he's like no i am the king right like nothing could stop me i'll literally let like my own people die right at the expense of like my own ego right what because is that dumb what was the thing you said like i am the morning sun in the night sky or some stupid like, shit like that well that was it was cool when he said oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it was like i am the evening star in the morning star, or whatever it was yes because he was like he is night and day right like he is you know he is the beginning and the end you know like kind of like that that's literally what god says right because pharaoh literally plays god you know <laughs> yeah because like jesus is like um or i guess you know also god he's like i am the alpha and the omega i'm the beginning and the end i am you know exa exactly you know all, all that stuff and that's why like he he takes tradition in the wrong way because like he doesn't exactly understand what his father means but then also he kind of does and that's kind of i guess that's what his father wanted but then i don't really know you know because like i said like he was just he was so hell-bent on like just maintaining this this dynasty right not being the weak link it was it, it came from like a place of insecurity you know yeah um whereas like moses took tradition and like the i mean also like uh <laughs> <laughs> I guess what he was asked to do was a lot well, better. He was questioning tradition. He wasn't really upholding tradition. He was questioning it. Well, he was though because he realized who he was, and then he did what God asked him to do. Because he realized that's like, not he... really 
I mean, he was up. He was like questioning what he, who he thought he was because he wasn't actually Egyptian. Like that's what who that's what he was. He, that's what he was led to believe his whole life, right? Like because but he didn't realize that until after he discovered he was Hebrew. I guess I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's following tradition because tradition is you already have the set thing that you know and that you're supposed to uphold it. I feel like when he found out who he actually was, he was just trying to free the people under the guise of tradition. So I don't think he was, I mean, you could argue he was upholding the tradition that he didn't know yet, I guess. He was just kind of following along with what the plan was to free his people. But I don't I mean, know. I feel, the whole point is to break tradition. That was the whole message. Do not like, be so rigid I don't when it think comes it, to doing the right thing. I don't think it's the message was like break tradition. Like it's like don't take it in the wrong way. Like don't distort it, right? Like for your own ego. Well, like, I that's mean, the, that's really what the message was. I the tradition, like I don't think the tradition was distorted because the original tradition was his dad like killing all the Hebrew babies and then enslaving them in the first place. Like that was his up. Uh, like he was upholding the tradition that was already there. Like it wasn't a distorted version of it. That, that's what it was. Well, like the tradition was really just to just be like just to maintain the dynasty and the the Egyptian empire. I guess like the killing of the Hebrew people was just kind of like a side thing. Well, that was like, the whole point. <laughs> they didn't trying to free the Hebrews. That was the whole point of the movie. Yeah, but like that wasn't like the actual like the tradition itself was just maintaining the empire. It wasn't but like that's what they considered. It, it to wasn't like the empire it, was to use the slaves to maintain the empire. Yeah, but there's multiple. was built. But there was like multiple other ways to like maintain the empire. It wasn't like just the, it wasn't like the tradition is like every 30 years we kill the next born Jewish. Like, I, I don't really think that's how it was. Well, no, what I'm saying is like the whole like their tradition was upheld on the slave labor of the Hebrew people. Right. So like regardless if you're like killing them or not, like that's that's what maintaining the dynasty is, because if you didn't have that, that's a total like Egypt would probably would have crumbled. You know what I mean? And it did crumble afterwards. Well, yeah, it proves that Judeo-Christian culture is superior. No, it, <laughs> it no, it doesn't, because like they took all their it revenue does, stream. Though. It doesn't. <laughs> no, that's not what it proves. It kind of does, that, like, though. <laughs> you look at like everything, like a massive civilization that makes their whole empire on the backs of slave labor. Then you take that away, and fucking there you go. There's in, not even maintaining the dynasty. That's the fucking end of the dynasty. <laughs> Well, yeah. Half your, like, all your workforce is slave labor. How well, did they even get there in the first place? Like, how did they end up in Egypt? Well, so I think they're, they're first exiled in Babylon. And then, well, actually, no. So what happened, if you remember the story of Joseph and the king of, he was the king of dreams, right? Remember, he was sold into slavery by his own brothers. And he was, like, and he was taken to Egypt, right? Uh, and he was a slave there. And then he worked his way up, and then he eventually became like he was appointed viceroy of Egypt, right? Um, like he was second in command to Pharaoh. And then the land that the Hebrews were in were like like the land was like they had they had nothing left, right? So the brothers had to look for stuff, and they ended up in Egypt, right? And they ended up in Egypt when Joseph was the viceroy, right? But they didn't reckon they didn't know he was Joseph. Right. But then eventually, you know, they they realize that the, that, you know, it's Joseph and then like they make up. Right. And then they they're yeah, we're brothers again. Right. And then Joseph was like, you can bring everyone here. So then he just brought the whole Jewish people there. Well, at the time, the Jewish people was literally like the 12 sons of like it's literally like the, the, the leaders of the 12 tribes, which is just the 12 sons of Jacob. Right. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really that it was probably maybe like maybe a hundred people if that but then like they all you know as gen like they grew bigger right they had more people over time right so then that's how, like just how the presence grew over time interesting so they originally just moved there and, and then they eventually got enslaved again by the pharaoh <laughs> well yeah because just over time remember it's literally what the pharaoh said he's like there were too many of them that they were growing too strong they could have up they could have rose against us right i'm not using this as a justification for infanticide <laughs> Right, but that just was, that's what his justification That's was. what I couldn't remember, is if, like, the Egyptians actually went out to go, like, get people, or they just already had prime targets <laughs> in their own homeland. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if it was just because they were, because I know there's cultures where, like, they literally just did yeah. that. 
Um, but I don't know if the, the Egyptians just did that or like they were just mad that there was too many Jews. Probably that. Like, I, I, yeah, I'm probably the, the latter, right? Because you don't know. Well, actually, maybe I, I really don't know. But yeah, I'm just going to guess it was the latter. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I just really like the way, like it just, you can tell that Moses is just on some epic quest, you know? He's just like, I'm on a mission from God, you know? Like I said, that whole scene where he's just taken up by the purple flames and he just sees, like, everything. Like, you can tell, like, he can just finally see it. Like, everything is just so clear now, right? Like, once he, like, he's just literally imbued with, like, the fires of God. Fires of God. Oh, yeah. And, um, Jeff Goldblum is in it. <laughs> but the the one thing that's weird and... I guess they didn't, never mind, they didn't do the movie, because most people think the Jews built the pyramids. Do they really, like, through slave labor? They didn't, labor? they weren't even around in the same period. But is that what people are saying? Most of people, like, miscategorize. No, but weren't, like, the pyramids built, like, thousands of years before well, that? Well, I, like I said, they're starting to see, I, I don't, so I guess the theory that people are bringing up is that the internal part of the pyramid was way older, and the Egyptians found it, and then from because like there's so much fucking shit that's like you you have to go into when you talk about that so basically summarize a lot of people like graham hancock and all these others pseudo archaeologists are claiming that there was more of a global civilization that built all the types of pyramids across the world and it was a little bit more global and it was like i guess if you want to mix it with folklore it's like like atlantis had a couple kingdoms right and there one of them was in egypt and there was a cataclysm like 12,000 odd some years ago, and then it destroyed most of the stuff on the coastline and left some remnants in that the original kingdoms of Egypt found that and then decided to build the pyramids on top of the already remaining structure, I think is what they're claiming. Yeah. So something along that lines, not saying that's how it happened, but that, that's what I've been reading is what they're theorizing. But regardless of that, obviously, like the actual like structures, the pyramids are trying to see if they're a lot older than some, however old that they are. But I think. And you, you said that there's water underneath. Yeah, them? there's water underneath of um. How the hell? <laughs> well, it's like a it's like a reserve. It's like just natural groundwater underneath, underneath the pyramid. And it was a lot higher back in the days. What they're theorizing, yeah. If you, um. If you go visit them, you can see where they, see where the water was, I think. I'm looking at, like, the diagram. It's all, like, the stuff that you said was not true. It's all, like, the the slaves building it. Yes, yeah, it says, over time, changes in the Nile um, River made the water table beneath the pyramids rise. About ten years ago, a new dam in the Niles raised the groundwater even more. So there's groundwater underneath the pyramid. Yeah. Ooh, man, yeah, I'm looking at DMT stuff. Like, a lot of the colors looks like all of, like, the Egyptian gods. Like, the same patterns. Like, the, the like, Toth. Like, his headdress looks just like some, like that cover of the Tool yeah. album. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man, this is interesting stuff. I, I'm always fascinated by, like, the psychedelic art and all that yeah. stuff. Um... Also, the Egyptian gods are pretty cool too. Actually, no, I don't know. I don't know if I could say that anymore because I'm saying that pagan stuff is cool. <laughs> I think you can say it's cool. I don't think it's blasphemous to say. I think it's blasphemous if you believe in it. I guess I don't fucking know. Uh, no, I was kind of joking. Um, People are serious about that shit, though. But um, oh yeah, I know. Like you can't like you can't worship them. Right? Because only God, like only God is to be worshipped. Well, they're saying like you know all those people that are against Harry Potter. Or whatever pagan shit they're like oh it's just a gateway drug you know you, you can appreciate the art and then there you go now you're worshiping it it's like shut the fuck up really you can you can make the case you could make the case if you're a fucking weak-minded individual but i don't know i mean like there's nothing wrong with someone being like yeah i don't feel like <laughs> it because like i mean it makes sense because like it's not required for salvation right i mean i think it's good right and it's and it's fun right and you can get a lot out of it but it's like what a lot of that's coming from of like the people like it's a gateway drug is like you have to do it in knowledge that like it's not 
the ultimate truth, right? Like it's not revelation. So you're not going to get any sort of like, like that out of it. If you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But a lot of people tend to confuse it, right? So like they would, so they end up like losing their focus, right? On like scripture and the, the Bible and, and revelation and everything. And, and that becomes their scripture, Bible and revelation. Um, so I like the, the, the case makes sense for me. Yeah. Um, but also like, I'm just looking at all this, like, art like is this really like what people see i've never done it but it's something similar i guess like everyone everyone that has claimed to do it says like it's something up to that effect yeah because yeah because i'm just like how well can you actually like re like do it you know because like like you know like i I wonder how well you can actually recreate it in like an image i mean well, I mean, I guess you can. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. Like I said, because I've never done it, it's hard to comment on. But I feel like the like the 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 whole imagery is kind of similar. So that whatever the bright colors, beings that you see, whatever the fuck. Some people saying they claim to see little gnomes or just geometrical figures or just a some sort of benevolent creature being. So it would make sense if it's something to that effect, but. I don't know. I'm not really one to... I don't want to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan is like... Like, when he sees, like, the hieroglyphs of their medicine, he's like, oh, dude, that medicine was definitely DMT. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, <laughs> like people say, like, there's all this, like, outlandish. It's like, it's really not. <laughs> like, I'm really not surprised, you know? Um... Especially even with like the, 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 the claims of like to biblical stuff. I'm like, cause people ask me like, doesn't that like kind of undermine your, like the, the faith for you? And like, does it make it seem like the Bible is like not real? I'm like, no, I don't, not at all. Because like, even, even if like Moses had a DMT trip, like, I mean, cause God, he's, he, he, he speaks to us in like many different ways. Right. So like, I would just kind of see it as like, that's how god like god spoke to him through dmt i guess if that was the case or like it's just a massive explanation of what people decided to do back then and what what inspired them to create the stories you know what i mean like i i feel like right um I don't know, because we have so little evidence of it and so little research into it i think the more we actually study it the more things will kind of piece together and make sense um so i don't know i mean I, it's like with anything like most origin stories are very similar across you know the world <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's that's very true but as far as the pyramid things go i think like they actually found artifacts and actual mummies underneath in like secret tunnels underneath of the pyramids but they're not in the pyramids but do you think maybe like they were there and then they just like fell down or something like they lowered over time or something well, I mean, Egypt has been raided and looted for, you know, a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand years. That so it's hard to, it yeah. really is hard to say, but like where they found them was underneath, but they never found them inside. But again, there's no hieroglyphs. There's nothing in there depicting any sort of worship or anything like that. It's just these weird, like shafts that lead to singular rooms. What? You know what I mean? Oh, so like, there's multiple rooms in there. It's not just like some I, one empty space. No, it, there might be like. Look up a diagram, like look up um the I, I think the largest pyramid is Khufu on Google. Just like look up inside of massive pyramid of Giza and just look and see what it actually looks like, and then tell me what you think that looks like. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of hard to describe. Um, so you said inside the pyramid of Giza. Yeah. Diagram. So if you if you search that right, the the one on the top left is a good representation um so what do you like you have what do you there's one entrance it's like a diagram of the insides it's like yeah so you got like the shafts is that what you're talking about is like the the top right like you enter in and then you go up and then all those like the ones that's shaped like a v is pretty much like air vents and air ducts that come from the side of the pyramid but then it just like it leads you to one flat room and then you can go up to one main room so there's two rooms that you can go to from these shafts and then i guess you have one little tunnel one that goes to the bottom underneath of the pyramid so then like but there's not like what the fuck was it even used for <laughs> well that's well, that's what they're saying the fact that they're calling it a tomb 
I think is a bullshit answer because they found artifacts and mummies underneath of the pyramid, but not inside of it. So if you look at the layout inside of the pyramid, it's like, what the fuck? Like, it makes no sense for that to be a tomb. You know what I'm saying? So what would you say? Like, what do you think it is? I think it had a functional purpose. But like, what do you think that that functional purpose was? Because like, I I have no idea. So if you don't, I have no idea. Right. Okay. So if I was like, that's why I was curious. I was like, all right. I don't know if you would believe in the alien thing, but I'm like, if you don't believe in that, then like. I mean, what? it could be a possibility, but like, how do you prove that? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I, you know. But my point is like the fact that they don't actually like they they have no conclusive evidence to say that it was a tomb. They don't, and they claim that they do, which is really strange. And so, like, that's the part that's bullshit. So, like, they call it the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. I'm looking at that. But it's yeah. just like it's subterranean yeah, it's like chamber. The... Who the hell? Who is subterranean, so the... man? Who the hell is that? <laughs> I think that's the chamber where they found all the shit was underneath of the pyramid. Okay. Right. But again, like, they don't have any context. So <laughs> they're just guessing. But yeah, but there's air shafts and there's passageways to get to the. But, that, but that's the only thing that's in the pyramids are the shafts of these two massive rooms minus the one that's underneath of it. Do you think that, like, those rooms were just, like, where they did DMT or something? Maybe. Did it has it? a lot of resonation, like, like, an acoustical resonation, so some people, like, will go and lay in the box and, like, vibe, like start chanting and shit. And it, Yeah, like, that's what I was just gonna ask. Like, do you think it was, like, used for religious purposes or something? It might be. Some people said it had a functional purpose, like, pumping water to power whatever. So if you want to think that they had the technology to power shit... Somehow, maybe, I don't know. But the point is, like, the way that it looks is very strange. Like, it it doesn't, like, it, it seems like it has another purpose besides just being, a, like, a burial tomb. Like, why would they, like, and also, like, they, I don't think that there's, because they added the wooden stairs and the, and the railing, like, separate. So, like, when they found it, it's, like, if you look at it, it's just, like, long tunnels. And, like, there's no way of accessing those tunnels, like, in a practical way. Is what you're saying? Not without this. Not without the stuff that they built. Oh, oh, okay. To get in there, they had to build like, like scaffolding and shit. Yeah, to get into these rooms, like you can tour them, you can go inside them. Like if you look at one, and there's one where like you have to really like they're they're not massive tunnels. Like you can't stand up and walk in them. You have to bend down, and you're like on your some flag. Like if you look up going inside the pyramids of Giza, there's like two wooden railings, and they're not even stairs. It's just like one, like wooden slats that they put and there's like little rungs that you can kind of put your foot on so like if you if you fuck up you could pretty much fall but like you're not standing up in these tunnels that's what i'm saying like it doesn't the the actual way to get inside here it's not like it's not designed for you to move so like if they really had to like they're they're gonna haul a body up there fucking like while their back is at a 45 degree angle like really well people were a lot shorter back then yeah, but, like, not to this, like, effect where it's, like, I, I don't know how, I need to look at how many feet the actual tunnel is in length and width, or uh, in uh, in height, but it's, it's not, like, it's not just tall people, like, it's, you'd have to be, like, probably childlike to get in there without kneeling down, or uh, without bending a little bit. Yeah, what? Like, it, like, look at a video of people going inside, it's insane how, what like. the hell, like, I'm really, like, what the hell did they do here? That's why it's a great mystery, and the, the the fact that like oh it's a tomb is such a bullshit answer that everyone just accepts as fact. It's just like, but again, until you can prove what else it is, otherwise, I guess that still stands. You can't just say it wasn't a tomb without any evidence to prove that it wasn't. So there is that too, but it's just the fact that like, if you look at it in common sense, and also if you like, I feel like if you go there too, you master like the scale of how massive these blocks are and how precisely they're cut. On, not on the outside because that's sandstone on the inside. Um, oh yeah it's pretty fucking insane to think that they did this <laughs> it, uh, imagine like it's like right it's like dmt trip and then we see like that the pyramids were actually to hold to to host the irrelevant podcast <laughs> like in that tiny room that's just where we're like having this podcast and like we're like the center of like all like and we see like we're on another dimension and we see like we're on the other side like f the way we're speaking now is like we're like you know in like interstellar when he's like on the other side like he's on the the upside down i guess like in in stranger things you know yeah like that's what it was
I thought that was cool in Stranger Things. That whole concept of like then that in Interstellar. Have you seen that? Long ass time ago. I don't really remember. <laughs> well, that was one with Matthew McConaughey, right? He was an astronaut or whatever. Yeah, I I actually really liked him in that movie. A lot of people said he was cringe. I thought he was pretty good. <laughs> um, that's a that's a movie where like the actual like okay Anne Hathaway is just annoying in everything. Um, so she kind of makes the movie worse. I was like, yeah, like Matt Damon is in the movie for like no reason. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> where they just like, ca- like they they capture Matt Damon or whatever the fuck, and then it's like, oh, great, it's Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah, and I like Matt Damon in some things, but in some things I really don't. Um, but then like, the, the whole message of like, it's just true love, and it's like, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like you're in this super cool sci-fi movie with all these like like complex idea and then it's just like it's just true and they literally it's not even like that that is just like abstractly the 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 the, the point that would be cool but like it's literally like Anne hathaway is just like it's true love it's the most powerful binding foot and it's like just like why <laughs> oh man that'd be a good movie to watch yeah i'd watch it yeah, that whole that director Christopher Nolan, he's got a bunch of great movies. He made that. Have you seen what's it called? Um, what what the? Oh, the the Prestige. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. It's about these two rival magicians. So like one of them, um, I don't remember if it was on purpose or if it was accidental, but he kills the other magician's wife. And then the other, uh, and then the other guy, like the other magician's trying to get revenge on him. So the whole movie is just them doing like, like back and forth, like magic. So like they're, they're doing like, like it's, it's like, it's like a show, right? And they, they have to go back and forth and it's like a magic competition, which sounds kind of cheesy, but it's actually really well done. Hmm. It's a good drama. Interesting. Um, I'm so behind on fucking movies. I've, I've yet to watch any it's any fine, dude. You're, you're playing music. You're doing good shit. Like, don't feel bad about <laughs> yeah, I know. that. Like, I, 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 know. I stopped feeling bad about that because I do shit now. <laughs> yeah. Going back to the Egyptian thing, because, like, they, they always claim that they found Khufu or that, that it's supposed to be, like, Khufu's burial chamber and that, like, he was actually in there, but, like, they never actually found the body in there because they said it was reportedly probably stolen. That was their answer. So the. They claim that his body was there, but that was not actually ever found in there. So that's like the discrepancy. I just wanted to make that clarification. I know they claim that's where he was, but he was never found in there. Dude, just imagine like all this shit that like we don't know where it is. Like, where is it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Because like you can't. Well, I, don't... I know like the law of matter is like you can't create or destroy matter. So like it's somewhere. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe it's in a million pieces and that's where it is. But even that we would know where it is. Um, but like, how many of these like ancient artifacts like do we know like that are like unfound or like are they even real? Like, um, well, I'm sure the Holy Grail is real, I don't know. but I don't. That, I'm I'm pretty sure that has to be real. Oh yeah, because I mean like people. Jesus was real and that story happened. Well, okay, whether or not he's divine, that's a completely other question. But like that whole Last Supper story like happened and they drank from a cup, so like that cup has to be somewhere. I swear to God, all that shit's probably in the Vatican. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I just don't know why they would ever release it. You you want to talk about the Greek? Because like they have like artifacts in there that claim is from that time, whether it is or not, whatever. But I can't think of a greater place to you know charge tourism than in claiming you have the fucking Holy Grail. So like I don't know why they would see the point of hiding that from the public. Probably because like I mean it's just it's sacred and like it would just be too much. I guess that's probably would be the explanation i mean islam has the same thing like there's a bunch of stuff that like westerners like can't go to like they've tried to excavate stuff and then they're like no what the hell are you yeah, doing but, <laughs> but you know it exists though like the what is it that that meteorite that's on the side of the building in mecca that everyone always goes to but there's also like stuff that we don't know oh i'm sure like we're because we're just not allowed to go but also i'm sure that there's stuff that like even muslims can't see yeah um be like what else like there or what it was like i think hitler was after like the spear 
that like pierced Jesus on the cross. We well, also what I, I can't remember because I I think I don't know if I'm thinking of Indiana Jones or not, but was he actually after the Ark of the Covenant? Was that? Right? Yeah, he he was, and then he went for the Holy Grail. <laughs> he discovered both of them, man. It's insane. I I watched a really interesting documentary of all the occult shit that he believed and that he wanted to find. It's like he really went to a deep dive. He had like in Indiana a lot of people Indiana doing Jones. secret missions. No, not Indiana fucking Jones. The like 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 real life Hitler put together a secret oh, task force to oh, go find yeah. all these like occult things out. Like he wanted to learn pretty much every secret of information from you know alchemy to aliens to fucking everything occult like that he could get his hands on to have a superior edge yeah, for his uh, Third Reich, the Thousand Year Soldiers. He made a deal with the devil. Talk about yeah. a deal with the devil, man. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, Hitler was really into fucking the occult. It's insane. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that much. I mean, I knew he was, yeah. like, I mean, he obviously, like, evil, dark, like, demonic forces were at play, right? But <laughs> I didn't realize it was, like, yeah. that bad. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Fucking Hitler. But, yeah, I, I guarantee you there's some pretty Gucci artifacts in the vaults of the Vatican. It's insane how strict they are with allowing anyone access to go in there, just to access files, not even to look at what's in there. Well, that I'm sure there's a bunch of just like stuff to be embarrassed about. So, like, I can understand why they don't want to just release that. Cause it's like, oh, like all the shit they did back then, they haven't, the people don't know about. <laughs> right. Oh, actually, I think they do have, which I think Mexico actually asked for it back. I don't know if the Pope actually granted their request, but they have a, they have some like Aztec art that they took. We live in an age where I think, was it the, I don't know if the British Museum, I know like the American government has given some artifacts back to Mexico, but I don't know about the British Museum because they pretty much stole all their fucking shit. <laughs> That's like, you can make the case for like, because now there's like a whole debate of like, what is like, are museums ethical and whatever, but like. You can ethically purchase things and, and things like move around exhibits to different museums. So there are actually ethically sourced artifacts, but a lot of the really old shit that's really cool probably wasn't ethically sourced. Oh yeah, I, I know there's like the, there's like the cool jewel from India that like they took, cause it was awesome, uh, and they put it in the queen's crown. Oh yeah, people got pissed about that. Right, yeah, like, and it's it back to India. Right, and it's like I, I guess I really wouldn't really care if they gave it back to India, but the problem is like, they just like for the coronation they just didn't use it. I'm like, you either use it and go full out or you just give it back. Like you can't just, oh, we're, we're not going to use it because it's the symbol of, of like a pre It's like, if they fit, that's the case and just, yeah, then they still they just, kept it. Right. I know it. They just send it back. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so stupid. What the hell? Like you're just, per <laughs> it's this whole stupid, like purposefully not like, like do like, cause like the, I, I, they, they, they put it on like some, some like Christian design on the on the crowns so they're obviously just trying to undermine that part but it's like if you want to do that then just send it back to india <laughs> it's just a great example of performing a politics pretend like you care and just continue doing what you're going to fucking do anyway i know it's like how like oh we want to offend you by showcasing your stolen fucking necklace with our cool shit so now we're just going to put it back in the museum and apologize like no give it back what the fuck <laughs> yeah, yeah it's it, it's on a it's on a museum so we're not using it it's like how out of touch could you be <laughs> yeah it's just it's honestly hilarious um yeah i mean i know there's yeah, there's a it, bunch of other stuff like all the egypts and like the yeah i know everyone hates england because of that <laughs> It's like it's funny because like I want to go to the British Museum to see all the artifacts. So it's like they either need to pay them significant royalties or just give it back. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> did they already? I don't know if they do. Did they just like? I don't know if they do. Did they take all this stuff? Or I mean, I'm sure in some situations they did. But yeah, like... a lot of it was stolen under fucking colonization. Oh. Okay. Um, but I I don't know if they actually do pay royalties or not. If they don't, they fucking should. Like, if they're not going to give it back because it's so long ago or whatever, then at least pay some sort of royalty or, or at least move it around. Like, fucking, like, like if whatever the country of origin, like, have it go there, 
if you're not just going to give it back, you know what I mean? Yeah, like you do that or just you just it. or you just be completely unapologetic and be like, "No, we took it from you. It's ours now." <laughs> like you, you you go either or. You can't Find do this keepers, like bitch. Right, exactly. Like it's just we took it. It's it's rightfully ours. Like you could either go that route or you could be like, "We're sorry. Here, it's yours now. You can have it back." There's none of it. like this whole like no, we're just like an, instead of, you know, being like, "Yeah, no, it's ours." you know, like, screw you guys, and we're just going to put it in the queen's crown for the coronation. Sorry, in this case, the king's crown. It's like, yeah, we're just going to not use it, and it's not even in a museum. Like, it's literally just not being used, and we and we still have it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, it's man, so I, I can't, like... Like, you can debate about which take is, is right or wrong, like, with the whole, like, unapologetic or apologetic, but it's like, everyone can agree that what they're doing now is not working. <laughs> Because they don't actually give a fuck. They're just trying to, like, appease the people that are giving them shit for it, but then not actually do anything about it. And, like, I'm never usually one to be on this, like... Because everyone always has a problem with everything, but I think legitimately showcasing stolen artifacts is pretty fucking tasteless. <laughs> like, because, like, I like history. I think if you're going to spend, like, if you're going to charge people money to see something that you didn't adequately pay for, you should at least, like, pay some sort of damages... Or something like that. Or just fucking give it back. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just kind of stupid. <laughs> and, like, even if it was that long ago, if it's, like, almost the majority of your fucking museum, like, bro. <laughs> like, the, the... Right. Um, But, like, the Mexico <coughs> thing, I, I don't really care as much. Because, like, literally, like, m like the country is just so mixed of, like, Spanish and, and like, indigenous anyways. And, like, also, like... The Aztecs weren't, like, the only indigenous people there. So it's just, like, it's almost like, like, who couldn't really claim this stuff, you know? Well, I mean... I mean, it'd be cool if we could see this stuff, but... um, I mean, I, I, I don't really... I can't really... remember what we gave back to Mexico. I think it was, like, like Olmec heads, like, big statues of heads or something. I think I was reading it was... It was something like that that we recently just gave back. To. I don't know if it's recent, but maybe it's a couple years. Right, but I, I know that there's, like... Like, I'm pretty sure that there's like Aztec stuff in the Vatican, or actually, it, even like I, th I think they might have given it out actually, because I know like there 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 has been time in history where like countries and like nations and peoples have like asked the Vatican like, hey, can you have can we have this back? And they have actually given it back, but I don't. I'm I'm pretty sure they gave something back when the in Mexico, but I can't remember. Well, it's like, if they don't even display it, like, they just took it to hide it in the vault, like, what do you even have it for? You know what I mean? If you're not even gonna make money from it, just to have it for no fucking reason. You know what I mean? I'm, pre <laughs> I'm pretty sure the deal was, like, or, like, the explanation is, like, so, like, um, it was demonic, right? So, like, they they probably, like, just bless it in there or something. Or they they they're like constantly praying or something. I I don't know exactly, but like it, it it's something along those lines. Like or like it's demonic. Like it shouldn't be seen by anybody or something like that. And you can argue of like whether that's you know that's that's that's, that's the no that. <laughs> well, I'm I, I'm just like explaining like why they did that, or at least to why I think they did that. Like that's my educated guess. If it was really that demonic, they wouldn't. I feel like they would be happy to get rid of it. <laughs> But then someone else might take it, and they don't, they would rather have it like, like you see what I'm saying? I guess I don't know if they're gonna be that pretentious about being the arbiters of blessing all the cursed objects. <laughs> and I guess if they're not doing, if they're not making money and charging people ticket sales to go see it, yeah. So maybe. so that situation's better than the whole I guess, British yeah, Museum I guess it thing. Is. <laughs> and if they gave it back, more power to them. I, I don't think it's a bad thing to give shit back, especially if you're not using it. Like, why? Like, for what? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Well, yeah, because also, like, I think some of these countries have just taken it and, like, they don't use it for, like, the religious purposes they were intended to, to use them with. Like, I think they just put them in their own museums. Yeah, and it's just, like, all that does is just spread money around. So it's like people are getting pissed off about us. It's like, we'll just go to like, you have to like Americans like, Oh, it sucks that I can't go fly to France or, you know, England to go see these artifacts. It's like, it's probably cheaper to fly to fucking Mexico or wherever the fuck it's from. You know what I mean? Like you can still go, you still have to go a far way to see it. You know what I mean? You don't really give a fuck that much. But also like, it just seems like there's, there's museums like everywhere. <laughs> like there's yeah. some museum in like every major city. 
for like some well it's like if it's something i mean i granted that's a popular lot of Bernardo fact they move them around so it's like you you fucking give it back to original country then everyone's like oh i want to go to this country to see this and then they just you know they they have museums by their specific time slot to fucking go view this artifact for a couple months and then it moves around so just give it back and then have a go on tour there you go I, everybody can fucking see it <laughs> mm, okay it's like how most artifacts move around i really do like the smithsonian like the natural history museum yeah. i like that one yeah i love all the ocean stuff in there and the animals that stuff is cool i'm still pissed off about all the dead sea scrolls being fake in the museum of the bible I was so I was oh, so excited to see I, that. I thought you were gonna I'm say so like pissed. I thought you were gonna say like the that the Dead Sea Scroll like I'm so uh mad that the Dead Sea Scrolls were fake, but like I I, I might the sentence just cut off there for me, so I was like, wait, no, what what are you talking about? <laughs> like the Dead Sea Scrolls are real. <laughs> but then yeah, I was fuck like, those pieces of literature, they're fiction. No, right, but the in the, they had the them Bible sp- story. No, sorry, yeah, the, they bought the museum, fakes. yeah. Wait. Yeah, they bought and all of them were fake. And they said they're real? Yes. Wait, actually? Yeah, the the that was the most embarrassing thing because like it wasn't even like it was like the museum's own fucking like extra checking, I guess that found out that they were actually fake from their original buyer and ended up being a scam. So it's like they didn't like do it knowingly, they just bought fake ones without realizing it, I guess. But it's like, oh, on, that that man. that's like <laughs> bump bump bum up. <laughs> I mean, they weren't really that impressive. They were just little last fragments of it. They, It's very deceptive the way that they do it because they have all these Dead Sea Scrolls that are on the wall that they kind of make look really old. It's so like, oh, are those them? And like, no, they're just little pieces of black fucking tar that are in glass. <laughs> Man. But they're all fake. What else? Like, is the rest of the museum worth seeing? No, it's not. It's really not. Okay. Most of it are fake similes. Like, most of them are not even... There's a couple that are real, but I mean, if they don't do that well of checking the validity, I don't know how fucking real they really are. But like most of them are just replicas, which is really fun. And you have to pay to go see this museum. It's such oh, a fucking really? scam. No, yeah, fuck yes, that. I'm not it's going. not free. Because all the other it's, Smithsonian it's, stuff is free. So like. Exactly. You walk in there and you just get this feeling of, oh, this is not a real museum. This is just a fucking, this is your donation to God right now. <laughs> I mean, but that's really not like just that. Like, it's not visually interesting at all. I mean, it kind of is, but the fact that most of the things in there aren't real, so it kind of takes the, the chart. It's like you're going to, like, a Jurassic Park land. Like, oh, it's cool, the visuals that they did to make it look like it, but it, it's it's just that aura of fakeness that just really just <laughs> drains your amusement really quick. <laughs> the, the, the Bible, the ride. <laughs> yeah exactly that, no like, that like would actually like that. that would be badass because like you go on noah's ark right that would be cool that, yeah and they give you this stupid bookmark because like you were born 2000 whatever years after jesus it's like bro <laughs> what the fuck it's just the whole thing is just a tourist trap really like you walk in there and everyone's wearing a trump bucket hat so it's like that's the kind of museum that it is <laughs> well i like that <laughs> i bet you do but it's um, just a lot of fucking dumb shit, a lot of a lot of fat, stupid kids and adults. <laughs> that's like all around DC. That's the vibe of the museum. I, no. That's all around the touristy places in <laughs> DC. Yeah, I know. But no, no, it's a fucking sham. And like I said, I I haven't been there in probably four years, so I don't. It, it may be different now, but I wouldn't trust the real artifacts. I mean, I mean, you, you think about it museums have thousands of artifacts so like you gotta imagine some of them are fake even the most prestigious of museums too even when you look at it so you, you can't really go look into any artifact thinking oh this is definitively an old object that's depicted to be the time that it says it is right. so you kind of have to have that understanding but i don't know i feel like faking the dead sea scrolls that's pretty crafty shit or you're just really fucking stupid or you knew and you just wanted you know have a bunch of revenue come in and then you're like oh i guess it was a mistake sorry you can't get those sales back like <laughs> so they lied so either way yeah. it was bullshit they either lied evil. or they're really stupid yeah, was... yeah they're either really fucking dumb or they were being purposely deceptive right. either of which like... is not good for museum <laughs> right and that's very insidious because like you're talking about like literally like the bible <laughs> yeah you so know? it's probably some like political right-wing thing that this museum that gets donors from it's not like a religious or it's more it's it probably has the same donors as the people that do the mega churches in texas that's my guess are you so it's sure of... it's like right wing i'm looking at all this stuff it has a bunch of things about like it says tyranny and tolerance and it's like all the stuff with the indians 
sorry, Native Americans, I don't right? Know. Don't want to get canceled. I have, I, I'm being, I'm being silly, but I, it just, it gave me that kind of like fake right wing Christian energy. <laughs> right. Um, is what it gave me. I don't fucking really remember, but the the point is the shit's all fucking fake, most of it, or it's replica. Dude. Yeah, it just looks like a visual, like, yeah, it literally looks like a theme park. Yeah, exactly. It's really fucking dumb. And I hate that I had to spend money to go there. And I hate that they are fake. The whole reason why I was going there is because I was supposed to pick historical art or historical documents to do a project on for art history. And so I went there to go do it on the Dead Sea Scrolls. And they're all fucking fake. I have, like, a picture with me with him. I was smiling. It was, I, looking back, it's just like, how dumb. Like I'm that's that's the last time I'm presumptuous about anything <laughs> because well, as soon as you as soon as you stop being cynical it bites you in the fucking ass so no longer dude it says <laughs> on the, in the Times of Israel it says Judaism is the star at a Bible museum built by Hobby Lobby <laughs> that, oh that, there you go that makes sense yeah yeah so you get you get what I'm saying now I'm actually looking at this part where it's actually showing <laughs> like the different kinds of Bibles and like the script. That looks cool. I want to guide. That would be cool. I would want to see that. But like other than that, the rest of it just looks like a, like a, I th- like, I think that that sounds vaguely familiar. I think that was there. That actually looks cool. Like all the different books like displayed. Yeah. That is really interesting to me. And it shows the different scriptures and like the different writing systems, like you see the Hebrew and then you see the Latin. That looks cool. That was there. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Wait, no. Yeah, I'm looking at this Dead Sea Scroll. That's not the fucking Dead Sea Scroll. <laughs> you see like the fragments, not like the like, the full ones that they recreated. Wait, hold on. Oh, wait, no, no, no. That's the, the Torah scroll. That is real. Then Bible Museum dead see scrolls. they're only about a couple inches they're not that big they're very and you couldn't read anything on them obviously oh yeah it looks like some so, it looks like it's like aramaic or something like that i guess so i i, I guess is that what they were written <laughs> in? yeah bbc news use u.s museum dead sea scroll collection found to be fakes all of them it's insane i wonder how that happened <laughs> who would have thought <laughs> how did they like because like there's some people that can make pretty good forgeries, but that's that's probably a really impressive one. Because Dead Sea Scrolls are very important. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, how do they manage the fucking? Not, like I don't know, I don't know how museums check things. So I'd imagine they have to use some sort of carbon dating, right? I, I guess know. unless they're just being like, oh oh Dead Sea Scroll, let's just do that, you know. Unless there's like some fraud behind it. That's the part of me that thinks it was intentionally deceptive because, well, like, yes. how do you fuck how the up? fuck? Like, there's no way that this would have happened. Like, yeah. we have the technology. It's not like, exactly. oh, we didn't have the tech. Like, you can't make that excuse anymore. Because, <laughs> like, that's the most embarrassing mistake you can make. Like, how could how could anyone take you seriously if you were claiming to have a super important artifact? No, because like, we're not a serious I, country. So, like, it makes sense yeah. that, like, some bullshit like this would happen. <laughs> like, like, really, like, that, it, it's, is it even surprising? <laughs> We're a fucking circus. We are, but we used to be, as John Dole says, a cool circus. But now we're not even a cool circus anymore. Now we're just a stupid circus. <laughs> like, we're just boring and annoying. And that's the worst combination ever. No one wants I to know. be boring and annoying. No one wants to watch a movie that's boring and annoying. No one wants to hang out with a person who's boring and annoying, right? Like, nobody does. Dude, Damn. I'm re- I'm reading about how these forgeries were made. So this is from CNN. So I would take it with a grain of salt. But they said the forgers likely use ancient scraps, possibly from archaeological sites around the Qumran caves. But most of the greens fake fragments are leather, not parchment, like the rest of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So the leather scraps could have been bits from ancient Roman shoes. So they actually use like old. I guess that's how they fool the carbon dating. So to make convincing forgeries, they coated the scraps with a shiny amber material. Most likely animal glue to fix tears and match the waxy sheen of authentic de- scro- Dead Sea Scroll fragments to the real ones <laughs> or the, the fake ones. Right. So, I'm like, despite being if- sold, hold on, <laughs> despite being bought from all different sellers, they were coated by the same amber material, suggesting the forgers may have come from the same hand. Mm. Among their errors was using modern ink 
to write snippets of it. <laughs> <laughs> the ink was still wet. They scattered the loose mineral deposits consistent with Dead Sea region. Where are the actual Dead Sea Scrolls? Well, I feel like they're spread across. Um, because I feel like there's we still haven't found all of them. I would imagine. Let me see. Oh, yeah, so it was found in then Mandatory Palestine. It's in the Jerusalem Museum. Okay, makes sense. That is appropriate. <laughs> that is very appropriate. So this is weird. So it's like, where did these forgeries come from? They said that they ended up in, I guess the guy's name is Green. They ended up in Green's hands. It only says that they were purchased on behalf of the Green family in four lots from four separate private collectors. But he said he wasn't sure who sold them the fragments. There's been different sources, but I don't know who specifically where those came from. How convenient. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who the but, other source, like, really? <laughs> that's like what you own the fucking thing and you have the most important artifact of your life coming through and you're like, oh, I don't know where I got them. Four different people sold them to me. Like, like the, the, what the fuck? Literally like the most important artifact of like everyone's lives. <laughs> yeah, like what in the fuck? But also I'm like, I'm just wondering, like if they're doing this shit in like the American like museum, I'm like, what the hell are they doing in other stuff? <laughs> yeah, and this, um, this museum opened like in 2017. So like it's not that old of a fucking place. Witchcraft is at play, man. <laughs> so fucking dumb. So, I I mean, just based off of that fucking information, it, 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 they probably fucking knew. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> God damn. Yeah, that was, that was disappointing, to say the least. Yeah, but when I was watching... When we were watching Prince of Egypt, like, I, I, I was just reminded, like, you know, because I was saying, like, they're just, like, the whole thing is, like, hey, Egypt, that was a country. It's pretty cool, huh? Like, that, all that. <laughs> it just kind of did remind me of that. I'm like, man, like, that was, like, a real, like, because every human has, like, a people have, like, they have, like, a culture that they belong to, right? And it's, like, I'm just, like, that, that was a people, and that was a culture, and that was a civilization, and that was, like, an aesthetic, and it's, like man like what if like i was egyptian like what would it be like to just like yeah i live in egypt like i'm an egyptian citizen you know like i that'd be really cool i i always want to i hope it's somewhat possible to at least see or visit places of the past to see what they actually were like i really want to experience that so bad well then just do dmt i'm sure i'm sure you could do that then no, not DMT. I want like the actual thing. I want to see how shit actually went down. Oh, 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 yeah, like a portal into the past. Yeah, I really hope that's possible someday. Mm, yeah. Would that ever be like? I since when have they been? When since when has the concept of like time travel been a thing? Like since, probably since Einstein. But like since no, but is that like an ancient concept? Of like going back what, time travel, yeah, or is that like pretty modern? I don't know. I don't. It's interesting. Off the to top of my read. head, I can't think of any historical. Obviously, there's been fiction books written about time travel, probably before um, it was popularized. Just in the concept itself, it's pretty. Like I feel like it's a pretty simple thing to say. I wish I was able to go visit this time of existence. That's impossible. I feel like that's a pretty simple concept to think about, right? Yeah. But the actual like the actual physics and the actual theory of time travel I think is more of the newer concept, I guess. I don't fucking know. Well, so I this is like kind of my understanding of it. I I probably <laughs> there's a chance I'm wrong, right? So if I am wrong, like please don't get offended. But like the way the Incas understood time, like they thought that like you can see into the future like they kind yeah, of yeah everyone's prophetic I, I would say they were more into foreshadowing than physical travel no that would make sense but also like their understanding of like peripheral vision and like seeing into horizon like they kind of thought that like that was the future and they thought you could like 
Like, I'm pretty sure they thought you could time travel. Maybe. Like, like, look this up. Like, I wouldn't be able to explain it in the same sophisticated way, but, like, I'm pretty sure they did think that. And they thought, like, you could, like, l turn around or something, and then, like, you were looking into the past. Let's see. Incans and time travel. Because the way, like, they would mark places, like, they would mark places with, like, certain, like, like a rope or something to, like, mark that in time, and then they could go back to there. So they're like, oh, yeah, we're back in time. Like I said, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure they, they did shit like this. Like, they thought they could time travel. Hmm. The only thing I'm seeing is that they believed everything in the universe was connected. The sun and the moon were considered gods. Um... Oh, yeah. They they thought... I, did I tell you? Like, they... They thought the sun... Like... They thought gold was the sweat of the sun and that silver was the tears of the moon. Right? So they thought it was just infinite. And then when the span when the, when the Spanish came and they sold all their silver and gold to the Spanish, they were like, "Oh, silly Spanish! Like the, you know, like why like why do they care so much about this stuff?" And then they were, "Oh wait, we we sold them all of our silver and gold, <laughs> right?" <laughs> Fucking rip. Yeah, it's like, <clears throat> <laughs> I'm seeing that they believed in biological death and social death. So obviously, biological is when the body was buried or mummified while social death was when the deceased remained in the minds, souls, and lives of the living. Huh. Interesting. Of course, when I look up Inca time travel, it just comes up with all this, like, time travel to Machu Picchu. I'm like, no, <laughs> not that. <laughs> I do want to go there. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I, I really want to go there. Was that just, like, some ancient city? Machu Picchu? Yeah. Yeah, in Peru. Dude, I'm just imagining, like, you're a, just, like, a European, and you've, like, never seen this in your entire life, and you just see, like, Machu Picchu, or you see, like, Tenochtitlan. Like, what was going on in your mind? <laughs> <laughs> that just must have been so crazy. And then they were like, yo, we gotta fucking take this place over. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> why wouldn't you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> from like from like um, any perspective you can look at from like like the freaked out perspective you could look at it for just from like the greed perspective like from any really perspective i guess you could it makes sense like why you would want to just take it <laughs> um so they i'm reading about like i don't see anything about their like philosophical beliefs about time but it's just that they use the sun to mark time passage for crop management and religious festivals like i don't I can't find anything about them specifically talking about time, but yeah, you know, from quick googling, whatever. But I don't know. Interesting. Man, yeah, I want to go to Peru because they have all the cool Spanish stuff, and they also have like all the Incan stuff. Yeah, that'd be it's cool. Uh, get the best of both worlds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Peruvians were a cool cult, or uh, Incans were a cool culture. I'm trying to get into like, um. So there's some Bolivian people that work with me. They were showing me like their music is really interesting. Like it was a really cool mix of of like indigenous stuff with like Spanish European stuff. It was really interesting. Like it used a bunch of those kind of flutes and everything because the Bolivian culture is very similar to the Peruvian culture, right? Uh, I forgot what the name of the genre was. It was some weird thing I couldn't pronounce. It was like some indigenous word I didn't really know but it, it was interesting i want to i want to go back it might be something i might recommend yeah that'd be fun um but I, i'm just not as like sophisticated like i don't really understand it as much as i understand like salsa so i don't really know how much commentary i'd be able to give but mm. i might get more like um how do you say like acquainted with it yes yeah do a deep dive Dude, I'm, I've already done that with the salsa. Like I said, I discovered that, dude, this song I discovered is it's like too good, man. <laughs> like with the with the electric guitar and the solo, it just works so well. And like the 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 the, the song, like the Montuno, is in this perfect, like weird minor key. It's so good. It just works. It's just like some shit in life just works, man. And some shit in life just really doesn't work, right? 
and like yeah. you, you you figure out life when you just figure out the shit that works you know and you just stick to what works right but the thing is like there's a lot of shit that works right so that that sounds like something owen wilson would describe i bet yeah or just like joe rogan <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, man. I'm influenced by like the way they think and everything. Cause they, they have good outlooks on life. Um, but it really is like that. Like just, you're just the shit that works, you know? And a lot of, I mean, like the shit that works, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> the shit that works doesn't always like make sense though, you know? And that's why a lot of yeah. people like don't have the shit that works. Yeah. Fuck man. I was just, yeah. I was having in a. Yeah, epiphany, you, man. yeah it's, it's very uh profound <laughs> yeah dude what if uh, what if we did a drunk fuck. what if we did like a drunk cast like what would we come up with <laughs> it honestly feels every episode feels like a fucking drunk cast honestly of our show <laughs> yes <laughs> but like that's what i'm saying like just imagine if we just did it like one time like what would we come up with i don't know i'm down fucking that's the one we do live we'll do it we'll do a that's what i'm saying yeah for y'all fucking camera up us slamming down whatever the fuck yeah that's what you probably you probably have to wait till you're 21 though you can't just yeah but dude that's what i'm saying like it has to be like live like or some or has to be like like we have to have video it can't just be audio that just wouldn't work yeah because like we gotta see our stupidity in person exactly but eventually i was thinking about making this thing like with video as well at some yeah, that'd be fun. At some point, um, would be down. I mean, I I know the lighting would be terrible, but also like I really don't care, you know, because like I don't, it's like I don't. This thing doesn't need to look professional. Like it's just it's as long as like we just have good things to say and it looks decent. Like really, does it matter? You know, like all this like the studio lighting. Like I almost like don't want that. It's like, yeah, we have to look as professional as possible while we're saying the most ignorant shit under the influence. Right, and talking about <laughs> the shit that works. Like, <laughs> <laughs> talking about, yeah, talking about DMT, Moses, you know, we have the Bible and it says this, and the Bible <laughs> says, uh, you know, a guy created the earth in seven days. So I believe a guy created the earth in seven days. <laughs> It's a miracle that the historical biblical fictors aren't gay because all they did was smoke marijuana and do DMT. Not one of them had a rainbow flag. You ever think about that? Well, hey, that's right. I remember <laughs> at, at school, like, my my friend, like, asked my teachers, like, hey, like, <laughs> like, Jesus had long hair, so, like, why do I have to get my hair cut? <laughs> and then he was like, well, Jesus smoked weed. Was he rumored to smoke weed? I don't know. I I mean I I any claims like that it's just like uh, like it, that probably didn't happen. But there's nothing in the in the Bible said that he did anything or drank anything other than I guess he drank wine. Yeah, he ate bread, like he ate normal stuff. Yeah. Like I mean there's a lot of stuff about Jesus' life that we don't know. That's what the passion of the Christ is about. Um which I think is funny that none of his homies wrote down just getting fucked up with the boys. <laughs> There's no know. locker room talk with Jesus. I'm sure they did do that. Because, like, huh, I don't know. It is funny. But, like, well, because, like, the only, before his public ministry starts when he's, like, 30 years old, um, the only other situations, like, that we know about what that happened to him was, like, he got lost in the temple when he was, like, a little boy. And that was really it. Like, we don't really know anything that happened in between then. Other than that, he was just with Mary. Just being a regular guy, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what, like, I, I know in, um, no, sorry, not the Passion of the Christ. I was talking about the Last Temptation of Christ. Sorry. Fuck. I'm about to go back and make, because maybe every time in this episode I was saying the Passion of Christ, and I was saying, and I meant the Last Temptation of Christ. <laughs> um god damn it well you made the mel you made the mel gibson distinction oh no they were talking about apocalypto i don't fucking know well Wait, yeah either way know. i've seen the passion but i haven't seen the other one you said well yeah but like there's those flashbacks in the passion where you like see jesus and he's like just you know just being a carpenter and he's just with mary you know like that's just that's that's just what i imagine he was like he was just being a a good son you know and that's just really what i think he was doing like 
I'm surprised nobody's like, this is a table made by Jesus. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. He says, JC, carved right underneath of the fucking dovetail, right there. JC! <laughs> <laughs> the big JC. The big M for Messiah, for, Mesh- like, for Meshiach. It's like, call one of Rick from Pawn Stars experts to see if we can <laughs> validate this. <laughs> oh, that, that- Get the fucking, get the iPad out, fucking analyze the carving. They wouldn't have this type of knife back then, you know, the way that it indents into the wood. Dude, revenue <laughs> through the roof. <laughs> For JC, baby. Well, fuck. Because Jesus wins, baby. He won. He conquered the devil. He was like, you know what, devil? I'm not going to let you tell me what to do. Because I'm going to go and down the cross because that's what I need to do. Because I need to save humanity. And then he let the devil create America. What happened? Did the devil create America? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Man, what the hell? Like, well, I actually don't agree with that, but... <laughs> um i mean he let the devil do a lot of stuff right yeah create america they're like i need you to make a bunch of rights that you're gonna change and amend over time the devil's like i got you let me smoke up a bunch of dmt I mean, it wasn't <laughs> religious standards so in that situation it's okay but no, it's but to like, make people believe they had religious reli- <laughs> rights but they didn't I mean, they had no rights you did for a while but then now like you take a poll of like the people that believe in religious liberty, it's like not even 50% of the country. Like you'd think it'd be like a resounding yes, but like a majority of the people in this country like don't even want religious liberty anymore. Oh, fuck. We don't even have financial liberty. <laughs> right, so if we don't, don't have know. religious liberty, we have like nothing. I don't know. But Who fucking knows? But like in like the history of the world, like America is a pretty great place invented a lot of shit we did yeah like i mean the light bulb the fucking iphone literally the airplane the airplane the internet i know that too like bam like with just those you like beat anybody (laughs) in like innovations the car yeah the car what else like the um i'm sure there's bad shit we invented too the nuclear bomb. Yeah, I was gonna say something like that, or like, do we invent like euthanasia or something? Probably. That or or like. Yeah, that or Germ Germany probably invented that. Yeah, that. <laughs> that seems like something Germany would invent. And then like abortion, who invented that? Also, probably Germany. Right, they did all the bad shit. Um, all the all the dark sciencey shit they did, or at least we know about from them. Yeah, like, do we know to the full extent, like, all the, all the experiments they did? I mean, like, or is there? I don't, I don't know. Is there still some stuff that like we don't know what was going on with the doctors and the Nazis and everything? I'm sure there was super secret stuff that they did behind closed doors, but I mean, we know a lot about a lot of the fucked up shit that they did, specifically with Joseph Mengel. But what happened? The, uh, the, what is what happened there? He was the doctor that was, <coughs> excuse me, nicknamed the Angel of Death. He had a very sick fascination with twins, so he would always like do experiments on them. He would just try to change their eye color by injecting with weird chemicals. They would do anesthesia or they would do surgeries and <sighs> transplants without anesthesia. They um oh like they would just do it like live. Yeah, they also like they say like how how long could a human hold their breath before they die or like how much pressure could the human body withstand before they die? Um, temperatures, stuff like that. Um, a bunch of chemicals, like how much, like what kind of poison, like they, I think they would feed them poison and try to make antidotes for it. But obviously like they just kill a lot of people in the process of trying to find out what would be the antidote to the poison, like stuff like that. Like they did a bunch of dark experiments on people yeah. to figure out like this is called dark science to figure out what our, um, our thresholds for certain types of things are. Oh, but like we're actually really also fucking bad because we had like that, like pedophile at the university who like studied the like, the like what like the um, the sexual responses of like children and shit. Like that is just as bad. Uh, that is just. What was that? I don't. Even, who is that? I don't even know that one. The thing, it's like Alfred something. No, and like the the college that he studied, like they literally made a statue to him. I'm like, what is wrong with you guys? 
what college was it i'm trying to figure that i think it's like penn no it's i don't know if it's penn state <laughs> you're thinking of a uh, sandusky <laughs> it wasn't sandusky no 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 no, no. <laughs> it's, it's it's alfred something i gotta figure this out but like but of course, people defend it because they're like, oh, it's like queer, trans, right? It's like, no, he was literally a pedophile that studied all this d- demented stuff. Alfred Kinsey? Yes, that is Indiana him. Indiana University. Yes, Alfred. K- he was a sexologist. Yes, Alfred nice. Kinsey. Kinsley, or whatever his name is. Albert Kinsley. Alfred Kinsley. Liberator or pervert? What did you, hmm. what did you look up to get to that? <laughs> Like to figure out. The I just, name. I, I literally just said Alfred College pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> Man, um, what the fuck? I'm, I'm not even clicking articles. I'm just reading headlines. Some pretty crazy headlines. So Alfred Kinsley, father of sexual revolution, who said rape benefits children. Great. Yeah. Great. So like that College is liable for sexual abuse of students. Yeah. That. Damn. Yeah. So that is just as like if not worse than like the nazis for like stuff that like countries invented yeah fuck this guy um i wonder why they put a statue up of him because literally i mean it, it like you know why jason well i know america loves pedophiles exactly and but... it's like literally it's like because the people in our government are literally like worship satan so it's like you really don't <laughs> and like satan loves pedophiles so like don't you think that like they would want to just do something you know like just because you can't put up any religious statues anymore or statues of people that actually did great things you have to put this up right i mean he looks like a massive and he's from new jersey too so it's not helping his case he looks like a fucking pedophile i don't even really think yeah. he does that's the, even the creepier thing he does look like a pedophile man look at the smile at least the picture of him on wikipedia or actually, yeah, like looks, in in some of these pictures, he looks like he's like, staring at a kid's ass right now. In some of like yeah, the, some of these pictures, his eyes are like so separated, and like that looks weird. But then, do people have proof of this, or is it just like what he's rumored to? No, like his studies are like he did like studies on all this stuff. Like they know what he was into and like what he did research on. Interesting. They have an institute named after him. It's like great. I wonder how he did his research. He just like wanted to fuck so bad, and like, yo, I'm gonna write a book about how good you can fuck. Yeah, but okay. like children. Hell yeah, he's like, hey, you want to be a star, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, it was like every state depicted by Family Guy. That was California. What the fuck? He says, oh, oh, his work disputed. Never mind. I was about to. Say, I I thought this said that he said that women are not sexual and that the female orgasm experienced vaginally are superior to the clitoral orgasm. But he said his work found against that. Interesting. Yeah, dude. It's like, what do you do for work? I'm a sexologist. What the fuck? <laughs> he developed a scale measuring sexual orientation, now known as the Kinsey scale, which ranges from zero to six. Zero is exclusively heterosexual, and six is exclusively homosexual. Yeah. So now you can and see why these people like him. I see interesting you have to read about him oh, this is <laughs> his research went beyond theory and interviews <laughs> right yeah this is great i hate this guy some involving co-workers nice uh he is like a- he justified this sexual experimentation as being necessary to gain the confidence of his research subjects that's literally like Show me your boobs for research. That's so funny. Yeah, it's literally like the Harvey <laughs> Weinstein. Like you want to be a you want to be a star. Like, <laughs> this dude literally pulled up with a <laughs> for scientific research. That's where this comes from. Is this fucking guy? Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> this guy is like a stain on like the achievements of our country. Um, but like who else did like awful like invented okay i know everyone has invented terrible things but like um holy sorry i'm i'm like infatuated with this dude he filmed sexual acts in the attic of his home as part of the research oh so it was like the first porn what the fuck how old is this dude dead oh yeah 
This is like he died in like 18, the, the holy 50s. Fuck, yeah, 18... that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like he died in like a long time ago. This dude just wanted to fuck. Yeah, that's why he became a pedophile. Because the more you do this, like there's nothing really else that satisfies you anymore. So you're like, oh yeah, may as well, you know. <laughs> God, I hate this guy. His his work was his critics, his few critics that there were, I would assume, said his work was focused on the biology of sex and lacked psychological and clinical information and analysis. He collected sexual material from around the world. Yeah, yeah so like now you can see why these people like him, right? Dude's a legend. Yeah, I hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I wonder if he was ever married. Um, he has he, he, he has he a married. bunch of children. Yeah. Interesting. He was also bisexual. So he says. He would punish himself for having homoerotic feelings. How would he punish he, himself? I don't know. Just said punish himself. He says he and his wife agreed that both could have sex with other people as well as each other. So he started. He also started the first. Yo, I think it would be really liberating if you could fuck other people, but I have to do it too. And then he secretly was like, probably got mad at it and then made her not do it. <laughs> oh, man. God. Fuck, man. Who would... Interesting. Who would... I've never heard of this guy. <laughs> well, now you know. Um, Who invented, like... Actually, no, I'm sure a lot of these things, I'm, um, like, eh, never mind. This is getting, like, way too weird. <laughs> this is, like, the weirdest Fuck, we've dude. gotten, dude. I'm down for it. Well, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Your hot dog Jesus. diggity down. Damn, I'm looking at a picture of his wife. She kind of looks like a man. Let me see. All right. You see why he's bisexual? Probably thought it was a dude. Um, yeah, I can kind of see that. <laughs> no disrespect to the pedophile's wife, but damn. That'd be a good name for a movie, The Pedophile's Wife. Who would, like, watch that? <laughs> what Kinsey has done for sex is what Columbus did for geography. I guess you can make well like Christopher Columbus like with the geography that wow. was great <laughs> this was not they're, they're <laughs> it said forgetting that Columbus did not know where he was <laughs> when he got there <laughs> oh man holy fuck dude we've been far dude. down the rabbit hole fascinating yeah, dude, you're just eating this up. I've never heard of it. I'm surprised I've never heard of this guy. They just made the statue to him, like, a few months ago. Interesting. Joseph Mengels, you said, the, the Nazi? Angel of Death. Yeah, that's him. He did some pretty fucked up shit. It was a German Schutzstaffel. Oh, SS. Oh, whoa. I just realized what the... Oh, Oh, in German, Angel of Death is oh. is Todsengel. Todsengel. Yeah, because I remember Tod means death, and I guess Engel means... Oh, bro, Friedrich Engels. That means literally angels. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, mind blown, bro. Mind blown. Bro. I know I know there was, like, the, the Japanese, I know, did some similar, like, just, like, reprehensible things. They all did, dude. Fuck them. Fuck, man. Can we come <laughs> back for this podcast? Like, have we gone too far? No. Nah. I'm reading more about, so people are claiming, like, how fucked up this guy actually was. People are blaming QAnon conspiracy theorists for, like, over-exaggerating how bad he was. For who? Uh, for Alfred. Our boy, Alf. 
Okay, anyone who does that, like, I do not trust anyone who, like, vouches for him or, like, says good. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I do not trust anyone who is, like, defending a guy who studied, like, the sexual responses of children. Like, that I'm, like, I'm just, like, I don't care. Like, I really don't want to hear what you have to say. Well, I think, like, the actual research is good, but, like, the methods aren't. <laughs> even so like, like you can you... fucking interview people you don't have to fucking perform acts to i guess like oh, i wonder yeah, if i, I rape this good. child what his response is gonna be let's write that down yeah that is what is <laughs> terrible the only reason <clears throat> that he just like it's just because he makes all this like these leftists like they just makes all those like dicks are because they're like oh, oh he was like this is like sexual liberation right and, like they don't it's like the whole thing with like che guevara and all that stuff and it's like hey did you know that che guevara also like hated gay people and black people and it's like uh you know because it's like they don't actually know what they're talking about i think it's more of a separate the art from the artist type of thing so it's like it's the whole thing why they call it dark science it's like the actual methods are solely unethical and they're awful but at least we know you know what i mean it's like there's i guess the only good thing about his research would be like unequivocally how harmful it is i guess like do we even like need to know that information <laughs> like, like well yeah because you need to know something definitively because like otherwise like you're already having people questioning i mean I don't think it's a very large sector of the population. I feel like a lot of people that are left-leaning are trying to shut it down. It's a very, very fewer demographic of people that are trying to be like age is but a number and they're trying to justify pedophilia as not being harmful. But that's a very smaller minority. Well, yeah, so that's like the I elite. feel like you need this stuff like, like this to... Yeah, this stuff is like what they want to know. Like, yeah, like so I who, feel like you need to have like, stuff like this to who, figure out what's bad. Like, who it, like else besides that like type of person like would want to know what this... Like, nobody... Well, no, what I'm saying, like, objectively, like, I guess it's good that we have it now. So, like, you can clearly point to why it's bad and why it shouldn't be legalized and why it's harmful. Yeah, but, dude. I feel like that's very important. People are going to push for that. Like, mark my words. I'm sure they are. Mark I'm sure they my are, but words, dude. I'm sure they are, but the fact that we have, like, actual evidence suggesting, well, not suggesting, like, just proving why it's harmful. It doesn't even prove thing. why it's harmful. It's just show. well, I mean, you, it's harmful it inherently. Like, you don't need to prove, exactly. like, it's bad because a guy did it. Like, it's just, like, that's, like, why taboo is taboo. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you have to... I'm not saying you have to have a guy like him to prove it. I'm just saying, like, the fact that it's already been done, he's a good example of why it's bad and why his research conducted the way it was it was unethical. A lot as of opposed people to the would actual that research. It, like, it, it, what, like, it was, though. Well... Because it's, like, why... I, I mean... Like, who for other... Like, other than some, like sadistic like just like horrible like, you know exactly the kind of like just disgusting like are they even human like elite type of person would want to know like who besides them would want to know this information like who besides that type of person wouldn't even have these ideas cross through their head like nobody i'm not sure some some people are saying that they're unfounded so i don't know if he actually was reported to do this shit or not but i mean it's not really that far out of the question because i feel like if you're Especially back in that day, like if you're researching sex back in that day, like what links would you go to? But I don't know. People are saying that it's unfounded, but I'm, I'm sure you could get away whatever. with more stuff. Probably. It's like, what do you do? What What did he do that he didn't say? That's, that's what we want to know. That's scary. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, this guy does not deserve a statue of him. He does not deserve to be honored in any way. Anyone who does, it's like, that's borderline like pedophilic like i'm sorry like i don't know what else to say to you <laughs> like really i guess it's kind of interesting to read about him like once but then it's like after that you realize just like how fucked up it is i guess definitively the most you could say about him is that it wasn't actual research it was more junk science or like cognitive bias right so it was, it was like the methodology was terrible so it wasn't even good yeah. science it was yes, just, I guess that's. It was just a guy with like a weird fetishes. Yeah, like it's just nothing. Apparently, him being a pedophile is up for debate, but I guess like most people can agree that it wasn't actually like founded methods or solid methods. So it was just a guy like who wanted an excuse to just like rape people. <laughs> so I'm like, no matter like what lens you look at, like this, none of them are good. Man. Damn. It's because he wears a bow tie. I think anyone that wears a bow tie rapes children just inherently. I wore a bunch of bow ties. Whoa, bro. 
Chill. <laughs> Will. Will. <laughs> Remember you said that, like, I should get a shirt that has, like, child porn with, like, a cancel sign through it? Yeah, since you're so adamant on it. Dude, I should do that with, like, the gay flag. See how I get treated. Oh, God. Yeah, this is a perfect month for it, too, buddy. <laughs> yeah. There's a... Well, so in, in Catholicism, June is the month of the Sacred Heart. So there's... I've, I saw a bunch of shirts that it has, like, the, the like the burning Sacred Heart... Like, the heart, and it says, like, reclaim the month. I'm like, that is something I would wear. The funniest ones are the people, like, I want to take back the rainbow. It's like why do you like rainbows <laughs> like what the fuck well yeah the rainbow is it's one of god's symbols and the yeah. reason it's like is it? well yeah because it's it's offensive to to a lot of religious people because it's like insidious because they take something that's christian and then they just like warp it and they appropriate mm. it for themselves well it's like all of human history <laughs> it's like what we do as people since the dawn of time doesn't mean it's okay no, that means it's okay, but it's just part of our history, I guess. But, I don't know. I don't really give a fuck. No, that, that, like, not the gay one, but the one that has all that stuff on there. I'm like, just aesthetically, that thing is so hideous. Do you know what? I will say the most annoying people have that flag that I know. <laughs> like, you know what flag I'm talking about, right? Are you talking about the one with, like, the, um, it's like, like the, the rainbow flag and it has the arrows of the black, white, and pink and blue and all that yeah, shit on the side so yeah it's so ugly Ugh. yeah it is a weird flag I, i've never been a fan of like flags that have just been solid colors or stripes or bars i've always like actual things on flags like, i like virginia state flag i think it's yeah. cool the only flag that like handles like the multiple colors really well i think is like the south african flag that one is kind of cool, yeah. Yeah, like, it handles all those those elements and those primary colors, like, multiple of them really well. Yeah. But other than that, like, it's really hard to do that in, like, a yeah, cool way. Real. But yeah, talk about symbols. Um, dude, the Galician flag is literally the Blessed Sacrament. <laughs> Galician. Yeah, look it up right now. Galician. How the fuck do you even spell it? Galician is G A L I C I A N, Galician flag, dude. Just it's li it's literally the blessed sacrament. It's so epic. Like that's my flag, dude. Hmm. Wait. Oh, with the white, the blue stripe in the middle, and the holy grail on the crown. Yeah, it's the blessed sacrament. Yeah. Nice. That is kind of a cool looking flag looks looks uh royal it does it's like the portugal flag except it has jesus in it so i'm like even better because <laughs> <laughs> the portugal flag is pretty cool anyways but the one i can't remember what country with the flag with a bunch of swords on it that's pretty cool oh um sorry arabia i think it's a, well uh, oh no that that has one and it has like no it's it's like a red flag like serbia or something Red flag with sword. Fuck. Yeah. Damn. I don't remember. <laughs> the communist flag. <laughs> that was not the fucking... Not the camis. Right. Um, you know, that is also just ugly. I don't like the red and yellow. It's just gross. Maybe it wasn't a sword. Maybe it was arms. Like Austria or something? No. No, it's not that. Damn, it's actually getting late. Oh shit. Yep, and we've, we we got a good length with the Prince of Egypt. Ten out of ten for me. Sorry, we had to go talk about Alfred Kinsey and the Nazis. Uh, <laughs> please forgive us. Oh, with Sicily, Sicily. That's a cool looking flag. Oh, yeah, with, like, the three-legged thing. Yeah. That is cool. Okay. Thought... Th yeah, that one's cool. I really love... I even like the, the Japan flag. It's cool. Like, it's just simple. I like the rising sun. Yeah, and it's just the white and the red. And, the, like, the, yeah. the Korean flag is also cool. I love that, like... Yeah, that one's cool, That, too. like, blue and red, like, kind of 
tilted on like a the side like um yin and yang hong kong's flower flag is cool i think most asians have cool flags oh yeah like the the south vietnam flag is actually pretty cool have you ever seen that one no it's like the yellow just like a like south vietnam it's like yellow with the red stripes in it oh okay but it's like in it, a lot of the other countries would make it so that red was the dominant color and it was the yellow going through but then they they flip it around interesting um china has a awful flag yeah just, just a red just, flag just, with a star yeah just boring like they it could have been represented in such a cooler way um the type yeah, i feel like china could have a cooler flag than that yeah because it's like they have so much cool stuff to work with but oh taiwan that's a cool flag i like that sun yeah that one's cool oh argentina that flag is badass with the golden sun yeah 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 I'm just looking at flags now. Shit. Yeah, dude, we're just looking at that's like <laughs> we're just looking at stuff and reviewing it. Like we looked at Egypt, <laughs> then we looked at, you know, India, and now we're just looking at flags. Comment your favorite flag below. Dude, I always confuse the Chile flag with Texas. They look like the exact I swear they're the same flag. <laughs> really? Yeah, look at the Chile flag and then look at the Texas. It's like the, it's literally the same thing. Huh. I guess I never noticed. Oh, I, I see the difference now, but even so, I f I'm going to forget who's who. They look so similar. Do you think the Nazi flag looks good aesthetically? Do you think it's a cool looking symbol? Minus the Nazi shit. It's just kind of <laughs> creepy. I don't know. But I don't know if that's just, I don't know if that's just kind of how like, because of the Nazis or like. I don't know. It just looks like some weird pagan thing. Yeah, it does have a ominous kind of vibe to it. Yeah, like even it, it just looks very yeah creepy. Like it doesn't look cool or like inviting or so. I don't know. <laughs> it definitely does not look inviting. <laughs> no, but I guess it gets the job done in that sense. Yeah. Shit. Mech. I love Mexico with the eagle. Mexico does have a good flag. I like that flag. Do you know the story of that? Um, it's like. It's like the folklore of how Mexico became a, a, a land or something. Yeah, like I, the, I the Mexica people who were just the Aztecs, like they they saw an eagle, apparently like they saw an eagle on top of a cactus um, and like the gods told them like that's where you need to build your city and that's where they built it. <laughs> um, so the geography is actually apparently terrible. Like Mexico City is just like sinking and has a bunch of like like sewer problems and all that stuff and like road problem but like it's just because that's just where they didn't know that back then but that's just where it was built yeah um yeah dude boys trip to mexico anybody hell yeah yo ho mexico yo. dude boys trip to i do like colombian the colombian flag that's cool looking i like how the yellow is like bigger than the blue and the red that's cool looking i like the the swiss flag or the the switzerland flag that's a good one swiss flag jeez i can't talk oh god I'll i think i need to go to bed <laughs> fuck. fuck i'm losing man. my grip on reality nope you don't want to do that um in england sorry britain's cool with the union jack yeah it's all right El Salvador is, is cool. I like that shade of blue. And it follows your yeah. standard. It has a picture in it. And it's not just like... Exactly. Yeah, it's cool. Like it has like a pyramid thingy. Yeah. And like every other... Like the Central American country, like all the flags look the same. I also like Blackbeard's flag of the, the skeleton playing a harpoon at a heart. I always thought that was a cool thing. Let me see Blackbeard flag. I'm sure you've seen it before. Oh yeah, I've seen this. Yeah. Hmm. Now you gotta pull up a picture of all the fucking flags so people don't feel left out. Have fun. No, I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can look it up yourself. <laughs> Rip. Um. What's another cool flag? 
like the Oh, um the Louisiana flag is pretty cool. I think I remember that. It's like with the pelican, it's a cool one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a cool flag. The New Orleans flag too is cool with the fleur de lis and like the Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks kinda like France, but it's like a it's like reimagined France. <laughs> France reimagined. France but smellier. <laughs> and like trunker and like just <laughs> yeah grocer oh look up the south carolina flag in terms right. in terms of like i got like two more flags in me that i'm done <laughs> that can just be the last one that i think is the best state flag that south is... oh with the the palm tree and the moon yeah that is yeah awesome. i do like that one i should remember that because every annoying fucking white girl has that on the back of her truck <laughs> I know, and, it, and it's just annoying because I'm sure they're like mm, the culture, and I'm like, no, I'm sure it's really boring. <laughs> it's like we get it, you got drunk at Outer Banks, blah blah blah. Fucking <laughs> like the only states that like found actually, yourself, like the only states that do have like a distinct culture, and like I think I can see why they would put there, and I actually do see the states a lot. It's like California with the bear, makes sense. Like I can understand why people are are like. Yeah, I'm a Cal- I'm California. I'm proud of being Californian. Like Texas makes sense, Louisiana, and maybe Florida. Other than that, like I don't even know any of the other state flags. Or like New York, I think. But even that, I don't even know what that looks like. What is New York? Look Tennessee's like? flag is kind of cool. It's like a redneck pokeball. <laughs> what now? The Confederate <laughs> Confederate pokeball. Look up Tennessee flag. Tennessee. Flag. <laughs> Redneck Pokeball. Hell yeah. I still don't even really like that. It's kind of weird looking. <laughs> oh, oh, Maryland. That's a cool flag. That that actually might be I, the best one. I do like Maryland's flag. I love the... I hate the people and the geography, but I like the, the flag. Well, we're not thinking about that right now. We can, we can put <laughs> all feelings aside. Fuck Maryland, bro. And all who reside there. Is it that bad? I mean, it's it's just like anywhere. It's fucking shitty everywhere. Oh, boy. No more than here. Well, I'm tired as well. And it's been a good uh, podcast for tonight. Mm-hmm. And I will see you on the next episode. Of the- oh, dude, if you send me the episode, <laughs> if you send me the recommendation, I could we could do it like on Thursday. Sick. Yes, sir. Prince of Egypt. Great movie. Go watch it. If you haven't watched it yet, you're gay. Just just watch it. Are you going to watch it? <laughs> I have nothing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm glad that our, like, on RSS we're getting more uh, downloads. I noticed there's that guy commented on... Let me see. God, I have to pull up the... The guy commented on our City Morgue um, episode. He said, like, thanks for seeing... Like, th- like, thanks for this episode. I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah, thanks for YouTube u- uh, user Militant Snail. Thank you for commenting. That's um, a great name. Right, I do like that. Militant Snail. Yeah, you did a good That's job, cool. man. Um, yeah. We're shouting you out. Um, yeah. Yeah, on our awful podcast i don't even have like anything like there's <laughs> our, no structure our, to this we're just talking bullshit our awful racist podcast yes homophobic sir. fucking well i actually shit. i actually am <laughs> 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 like i'm very outspoken about that got homophobe question mark will's right. next shirt <laughs> they're like is that gay Cause I don't like gay. <laughs> God. Well, if I ever get in trouble, it's because of your fucking dumbass. I just want you to know I blame you. Yeah. Or you could blame gay people. No, I blame you. You alone. <laughs> I alone control the dragons. Fucking go to bed. That's a How to Train a Dragon two reference. Yep, I'm going to bed Gives right a now. Fuck. No mm-hmm. one cares. Well, I do. Well, actually, I don't even really care. Well, that's good. Good night, everybody. How to train these hoes. Yes. Good night. Good night.